Miss Adam and everybody. What up, Kent? What up, Juju? What's good? Hey, nothing, man. What's going on with y'all, man? I can hear me good. I got my other headphones on right now. Yeah, I can hear you good. I'm, I'm I can hear you well. All right, man. First, want to say what's up with, to the panel. What's up to the chat? And we here talking about the split brain experiment. You know what I mean? Got Juju up in this piece. What's happening with you, girl? I mean, woman. Let me not, you know what I mean? Chilling, just uh, watching Bobby Banger lose his mind. <laughs> True indeed. Yeah, he over there about to go down, go ham on them suckers, man. But we already know. You know what I mean? You can only talk to a brick wall for so long. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. You, you, you be crazy I mean? just like them, right? Hey. What is it? Doing the same thing over, expecting a different result? That's the definition of what? <laughs> no, I mean, no, I, you know, I, I understand what his what his passion is, man. He, he don't want the people to be fooled. Yeah, and but some people are incorrigible, and you just got to recognize when that is, and let them, you know, be to their own devices. Yeah, I feel you. I'm I just saying, you. nah. But I, 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 you know, what I'm saying I think uh, to be in these spaces. Peace. Uh, my name is Tika. To be in these spaces, period, and to do what we do, you got to be a little bit insane, crazy. I mean, to go through it, but you know, that's just me. I ain't really trying to throw no shots. Um, but I'm excited for this show. Some great sources you uh found for us. I will say, Chilumbwe, um, and I went through every last one of them, and I, I'm still on uh Gozaginga. <laughs> I pronounce this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. His name is Michael, y'all. He's one of the foremost leading experts, um, if I'm not mistaken, on split brain experiments or whatnot. Um, yeah, but fascinating. Gazaniga. Yeah. Gazaniga. Michael Gazaniga is his name, y'all. Get it right. Get it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Gazaniga is his name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and of course, you know, the description box is right there. So anything that we talk about concerning, you know, split brain problems. Um, yeah, you could just check out the description box and pull those sources. There's some articles. There's some awesome videos and and uh, a nice lecture by Mr. Michael Gazaniga. Um, yeah, which is one of the foremost leading um, experts on split brain. But um, so, where shall we start, uh, Chilimbe? Did you no, we gotta, go ahead? I'll let you lead the way. No, hold on. We got to let the people get, get in the building first. You know, what oh, I mean, yeah. you know, we got about at least yeah, you about know. 70, about go 77 ahead. of them boys coming over here, man. You I wish I, mean? I had some music to play. Shoot. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> I mean, we got the music. You know what, I mean? ah, what music we got? Man, go ahead and crank up that DQ, man. Which one you want me to play? I want to get man. right. <laughs> nah, we ain't. Come on, man. You know Which one you want me to play, man? He, he fucking with us. Uh, shit, I got, what you want? I got, I got hot sauce and I got drones. Those are the tight. Those are the... Them two songs. I like right that... Uh, I like that hot sauce, show. That hot sauce is off the chain. The hot sauce you know, is I mean, off the chain. The... I'm gonna play that, but um, make sure y'all throw um. I need that DQ QR. Uh, QR. <laughs> I need that yeah, QR code. That. <laughs> Where the QR code at? Why are we petty? God, no, you petty. You petty. <laughs> <laughs> you the petty one, yo. <laughs> Hey, where the QR hey, go? Hold on, let me hey, see. Hey, me man, see. shout to DQ, man. Hey, <laughs> music on fire, bro. Ain't nothing but love. Nothing oh. but love, man. Um, I got it. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Throw that up. Hold, hold on, that. hold on. We done, boy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> throw that, throw that up. Uh, Cash up in the chat, you know what I mean? Yeah, boy. Hold on, let me do it first yeah. before I do anything. Yeah, throw that in the chat. I ain't playing with y'all. Y'all, so, so, y'all make sure y'all support, man, because the brother dropping real good music. Yeah. And shit, these days, it's, it's hard to come across good music, man. I was just thinking about that the other thing. I said, yo, I said, yo, back in the day, like, 
every Friday, it used to be Tuesdays too, I think. Mm-hmm. Every Tuesday or Friday, I was always looking to see who came out with some new music. Right. And it was always like, it never felt like somebody was coming out with something. Nowadays, it's like, I check on, I think they only dropping it on Fridays these days. Mm-hmm. And like, man, don't nobody really be dropping, yo. Like, okay. and then when they do drop, it's like, eh, I don't want to hit it. You know what I mean? Let's speak about it then before I play the song. So I know, you know, people have mixed feelings and I don't laugh. I don't care. I've been a Cardi B fan since day one. No, look, I rock with Cardi. Like, Cardi, <laughs> I, did, I did like her at first. Yeah. She kept on dropping consistent hits. Yeah. I couldn't deny it. I couldn't deny it. No you can't more, deny yo. it. The last hit was Fire, which just dropped, I think. Yeah. Um, But I've been following her since Love and Hip Hop when she was on the show trying to get started. And, you know, she had different producers, you know, SHIT and on her and different things like that. You feel me? Right, right. Like, and she right. was really working hard to, you know what I'm saying? Get it. To get get it and she got yeah. it and it's like i'm i'm i be feeling proud because she endured all that right and she doing yeah, her yeah. thing and she ain't even like look ain't making no excuses about it like she look did at, it and that's it and she ain't looking look back i like that you know a lot of people try to shit on the culture of hip-hop but yeah look at how far it's brought certain people like some people could still yeah. be doing what they was doing exactly and actually that culture actually helped them to uh, sustain themselves and progress to higher levels of, of success. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, so shout, out to, shout out to Cardi B, hot banger. And you're right, right? Because people uh, born into poverty and born into those conditions, they didn't ask for that. So a right. lot of times, you know, you, you survive in the best way you know how and the best way that you've seen or you've been taught. And that might not always be legal or proactive or pro-social, but it's a uh, you know a, a survival uh, technique and it's a, um, a means to an end and that's just so you can you know figure it out and do something better. So you know I've look, that's one reason why I never became a cop. You know I, I do have my biology <laughs> degree and I was begged to go into the force with this other chick because we were like you know um, we were the same but total opposites. You know, I'm a black woman. She was a white woman. I went to Florida State, the University of Central Florida. We ended up working at the same place. We were both, you know, very athletic. I think we were some of the only two women that actually um, got certified and finished this ropes course, which, you know, is not as easy as people think. But, you know, me being who I was at the mm-hmm. time, super athletic, like, yeah, I'm willing to try any and everything. You feel me? But... Then when you see like your other uh, professionals or constituents, you know, trying to do do something and you're like, that's just not that hard. Just do it. But you realize like, yeah, for most people, it is that hard. You feel me? But me and her were yeah, yeah. You know, one of the few females who finished that rope course certification. You feel me with flying colors. So when she got the opportunity, she was like, please come with me. And I'm like, nah, because Juju. Pff, Look, mm-hmm. you already know me. <laughs> Everybody black would have been getting off, and I would have been throwing them. <laughs> already know, yo. Man. It would not be good, boy. I'll be then in found a whole Rico case on me. I don't know. I like I ain't gonna do that. No, but just because I have a, a sense of um I, I could say camaraderie, but compassion mm-hmm. for the environment because I too, you right. know live partly in that type of environment as a child so it's like you you see you understand the other side like you understand why the dope boys on the street why they do what they're doing i ain't picking up for the ones that's killing and just doing weird stuff but you know i I knew people like i was raised in that so i understand like the reasoning you feel me like having to make a choice every day you feel me so you know but i'm gonna play it i don't put the Y'all hit y'all go ahead and hit uh, DQ's cash app. Uh oh, yeah, we got no, we got real, 10 in the hey, building. support support real hip hop, man. That's why that's why I, I see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't DQ, even understand. DQ got real hip hop. Yeah, even though he signed, and this is nothing to hieroglyphics, but he should be signing something super big. You know what I'm saying? Like Columbia. You know what I'm saying? And hieroglyphics. But I mean, I'm going to need DQ to get them coins. That's just not for DQ, but that's for nephew too. DQ got a young son and he's such an active father. So yeah, he's a good guy. He's such an awesome guy. 
looked Big out facts. looked out for me in the beginning when he hardly knew me sent me a care package you feel me he didn't have to do that and i still Man. thank you and i still got you for that dq but Let's go, good, hot sauce. That's my favorite one. Oh, oh no, we ain't let we ain't let uh Mark we gotta let Mark get in real quick. What up, Mark? What's going on, man? What up, what up? Y'all go ahead. No, no, nah, nah, y'all go ahead to the song. We'll bust it up right after. <laughs> All right. No, I'm saying just the intro. We just, we just gonna let you introduce yourself, man. You yeah, know what I mean, say how you feeling today. You all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm straight. I'm good, man. Everything good, man. We're gonna hit this thing a little heavy, man. This is uh interesting experiment man it's uh not even an experiment a procedure that they had to do yeah and that, that the corpus details, colosums, yeah. yeah that fascinating bro ain't it super fascinating it is and so we're gonna touch on things we're gonna touch on some things about the brain and about things that humans do that we may not know mm -hmm. we do man mm -hmm. i don't know this is gonna be a good one all right y'all yeah. ready for it all right yeah awesome. Awesome. Let's get it Get it. Uh oh. Okay. I gotta give y'all some volume. Man. Yeah. There we go. There we go. DQ, baby. LAE on the track. About to have some fun with this one. Check. Uh. Back to catch wreck. No respect for those who break their neck to keep their hoes in check. Be sure to check the box off how I'm knocking their socks off. Unique flavor, stay in the bag like hot sauce. Let me get mine off. These niggas is tripping, they signed off. I'm becoming a one of a kind boss. Think the kush is for Germany, the way the man cough. Hilarion with the flow, I'm fucking the word off. These niggas claim they hard, they really appear soft and peeled off. Mad job and I ain't when the spears toss. Newbie ass rappers is really my kids now. I'm just Aubrey on the Graham, cropping these kids Back out. to catch wreck. No respect for those who break their neck to keep their hoes in check. Be sure to check the box off how I'm knocking their socks off. Unique flavor, stay in the bag like hot sauce. Better call a timeout. A fool, nigga, you a fool, nigga. Think you can fuck with this rap style. I do this shit for fun. I'm really the class clown. Tap dancing on top of niggas head till they tap out. Really the cash cow. Submission hole, yeah, you pigeonhole. Realizing your dice then crapped out. Put yourself in the box, you really just assed out. Cause your boy about to pop and I'm shutting that ass down. Cream of the crop, it really get passed round. Cause I'm cooler than the cooler of cools and hick sound. Niggas claim they rap they really just sit down. Only rap for Facebook, I'm reporting that shit now. Compilation. The music sending the zip file to the nearest a and &R. Big fish in a big town Musically inclined, I'm never gonna slip down Cause the shit is going up as soon as it's mixed Back down to catch Rick No respect for those who break their neck To keep they hoes in check Be sure to check the box off How I'm knocking their socks off Unique flavor, stay in the bag like hot sauce DQ Man, straight fire Uh oh, try to play it again <laughs> 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 Here we go. Straight fire, yo. That's straight fire. That's my favorite. That and drones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, indeed. We will probably get that drones in the no. middle or whatever, man. man. Hopefully, DQ can hit the panel, man. And um, uh, we need that that QR code, uh, DQ. I don't think we got that on our um. I don't got yeah. Here, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm in the Discord right now. I'm I'm telling these these um people that uh, we live. Y'all can come support our live. Yeah, say say hi to the people. Yeah, <laughs> that part. It's the work done instead of running y'all mouths. <laughs> that part. Yeah. Okay. So. But so you y'all know we've been having these conversations about the brain, man, for the last what six months now. Four. Um, <laughs> it yeah, feel like four. Four. Feel like, yeah, feel like half. Like we almost there. And yeah, uh, yeah. I enjoy every bit, everybody that support man, every single one of our views, a uh, single person that that um that watch every show or at least most of them, man. I just want to let y'all know I personally appreciate y'all and keep on watching and you know we just gonna keep on bringing it, man. You know what I mean? But without further ado, Ju, what you want to say? All I'm gonna say is that I don't I don't know why people be saying what. We don't let nobody on this panel because we literally drop the link every time. So I put that on there early and often. <laughs> early and often. So I was like, huh? 
So, um, yeah, this is called the Interactive Brain Show, and we did change it. We changed it because we got through, like, the, the, the most important pieces that we did want structured. Um, so now it comes to we, we want to have some active engagement. We want you all to feel like you can participate in the discussion, whether it's questions, whether it's something you have to add, um, because we're all learning. And I don't know, I hate this idea that people think that PK think we better than everybody else. We think we know everything. No, it's not that. Is that it is that we are a group of people that have come together in somewhat a study group, scholarship group or whatnot, who'd have chosen to know and do better, meaning we take the time out as a group to read more, you know, um, try to read more than average, I think, um, on lots of different things. So we can showcase certain things, but in the background, it's like five other sources that are currently happening at the same time, you know, on different subject matters so we can stay abreast on what's happening in the scientific world. So yeah, don't think that that's how we feel. You know, it's just, it's a hobby and we want everybody to have that same hobby. We feel like that type of hobby would do us more good than damage um, because we're learning uh, about the world around us and you know, how we can uh, be better in it or those things that help us be more advantageous. So please do hit the link. Come on the panel. Please join us. It doesn't matter. Um, there's no judgment here. You feel me? There's no judgment here. So yeah, uh, join the join the panel. Cedric, I see you out there. Uh, Brass, I, I I don't know what happened to you, Brass, but you you're supposed to be on this panel. I, I, I don't know why you're in the the chat like that. Um, what up, Callie? Salute to Callie Enigma. Check out his channel. <laughs> hey, Mitch, that's what's up. Thank you. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Callie, man. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, like you say, man, y'all welcome to hit the panel. Um, uh, brother, chill, man. You wanna um, I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up, man. Yeah, so I'll just give a, a brief uh, background to the conversation, put some context to it, um, and then discuss some of the um, implications of it. Uh, I, I'm using, well, the sources we're using is mostly from Dr. Michael. The reason why I like him is because he was actually the one who either performed the surgery or assisted in the first surgeries that were done. So he's Right, knowledgeable about the actual process. Um, there has been some um, unique discussions about uh, uh, unique discussions about the overall process. So, it started out with um, individuals who were having severe uh, seizures, and what it was was that they noticed that the seizures were starting in one side of the brain and going through the uh, cuspum. Uh, into the other side of the brain, causing some severe damage. And so they wanted to try to isolate that from happening. And so they cut, uh, what's that? What say it again? Pronounce it for me, Juju. Uh, 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 wait a minute. I can't look at it. <laughs> I'm still processing. Oh, you talking about the corpus co callosum? Yeah. Corpus callosum. Right. So that, that corpus callosum is, uh, wires you could say for simpler explanations mm -hmm. between the left and the right side the of your brain correct they have lots of axiom and neuronal connections and all that type of stuff correct mm -hmm. um and so in order to prevent those seizures from passing they cut it that's mm -hmm. when they did it then they wanted to see what the effects was and at first they seen no effects uh no deep effects uh until they designed specific experiments. And then when they designed these specific experiments, that's uh -oh. when things became quite complicated. Split brain so, problems. <laughs> brain problems. And so that's what it is. So there was an assumption. I don't know if y'all remember we did the, um, I did the high level conversation with Logic. I had a, a clapping hands and I called that uh, syncretism. That's, that's what the brain does. That's a relatively, I won't say, that's been investigated relatively new after the split brain uh, surgery. 
when they did this. And the reason why is because the, the results of the actual split brain experiment showed that um, while we perceive our experiences as one single entity, um, the evidence shows that that's not actually what happens, that your right. brain has multiple networks that are competing, you could say, um, and are able to perform functions um, independently of each other. And right. because of that, you get into these these questions of uh, consciousness, um, agency, um, and you get into something called uh, confabulation. Yeah, uh, making it up. Now let me. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the, no, the basis for this thing. Um, confabulation. We've actually see this happen quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, even in some of our live shows and in conversations, um, I want to make sure that we understand that it's not lying. The science doesn't right. call it lying. Um, for all intensive purposes, you fully believe the reason why you're doing or saying what you're saying is it's because factual. of this right. specific thing. And so right. uh, we're going to get into the details of it. So, you know, that's the background of it. Um that's the background of the story. Um, Joseph Ledux, Ledux um, is another one. Him, he was a under undergrad for Michael, and he has a book called The Synaptic Self, mm -hmm. and um, great reads. And he touches on this a little more, the uh, same as Mike do. So they got books out. If you're in a Discord. Um, out, you know, you get access to those books. Facts. Um, and Thank you, Salambwe. No problem. And it's definitely worth checking it out. Um, I'm going to hit up on the Folly of Fools in a few minutes. I uh -huh. we get into some more details, and then we're going to get into some interesting conversation. Right. Did you um, want to give people the definition of confabulation, or you wanted to come back to that? Because I wanted to talk about some, like, uh, pre whack requisite things talking about you know uh the the our our two halves of our brains and some of the implications uh childhood versus adulthood real quick before we uh, move forward yeah go ahead go ahead we can come back to confabulation later yeah that that was wild when i read that and i'm thinking and i'll speak ahead on that real quick because i'm thinking that way may be one of the reasons also and I don't remember studying this as a criminologist, but we studied many things because we did a little bit of, you know, psychology, sociology, all that. But I would see how now victims' testimony would be definitely problematic with, with something like that. You get what I'm saying? Um, but we'll touch that later on. So what I wanted to discuss and then re reading all the, the source material concerning split, uh, split brain um, experiments or like this two brain, one of the things or questions was like, you know, is it, you know, that means this is more than one person like that me concept. Um, and something I read in one of the sources, it was saying, okay. what did it say exactly? And I didn't agree, agree with it because it had mind oh split mind. And I'm thinking, well, I guess it does make sense. Now it, the mind would still be the same, but it'll be a split brain. But in this case, when you go into the studies, it, it is kind of like two separate minds. <laughs> it's like a bit of a rabbit hole, but not that much. Um, but one of the important things is they were talking about when they have to do this. The, so um, separating the corpses, um, col colossum is like logic said, uh, excuse me, somebody's talking about me. Um, Chilumbwe said is when people are having severe epilepsy, but that's not the only, the, um, there, there are other reasons for that, but also they were talking about hemisphere damage because your right brain does certain things and your left brain do certain things. And when I find my notes, I'll tell you exactly what those are. But the implication for that being worse is as an adult versus a child. So if you're having some type of uh, hemisphere damage as a child, um, your brain is actually able, is it plasticity or degeneracy 
Chilimbwe, but it's able to um, compensate for that hemispheric um, destruction, so to speak. So, you know, um, in... So, yeah, I, I guess if that was going to be the case that you would have an issue, it's best to have it younger than older. Um, when you're older and you have a, a problem or damage to either hemisphere, it can actually um, be compacted and, and be m much worse um, because your brain doesn't have that same... Um, ability to be as oh it's elasticity um um plasticity it doesn't have the same uh plasticity effect that it did when you were a child as far as being able to learn uh as being able to your brain being able to um compensate for the oh. damage mm -hmm. in that and whatever hemisphere you know right right, right. you get what i'm saying um, the, the, the source material was stating that it's easier for a child to overcome hemispheric damage yeah. than it is for an adult because the brain can, um, wire or make neuronal connections right. of elsewhere, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. and things like that. So I want, um, so I wanted people to remember that, um, yeah, yeah we actually touched on that. During the other brain show, when you you're did. younger, you have yeah, more you, neuronal uh, connections. Yeah, you you form it better when you're younger, and as you get older, that plasticity becomes more strained. And how you have uh, neural genesis as a child, mm -hmm. and then you have pruning that takes place. Yeah, pruning. Yeah, so as a child, you know, if you had this done, you could um, really, really have a full and recovered life. And, and even as an adult, there's some, some case studies of some of the earlier ones mm -hmm. who had the surgery done that now have uh, the brain has. You I mean, the say, corpus collosum yeah. separated? Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, they, um, after a certain amount of time, the effects of that experiment no longer exist because their brains have um through plasticity yeah um, made yeah. made new Correct. neural pathways to compensate for right that. yeah so yeah definitely to, fascinating it is super fascinating so i wanted to give you all um a list of things that our brain does based on hemisphere right and then i'll let you have it Kent or Chilimbwe. So your left hemisphere. So first of all, let's say that there is no such thing as right brain, left brainer. That doesn't. Right, right. That's that's actually uh, pseudo. Um, if if it makes us feel better, sure, believe that. But there's no scientific evidence to say that actually means anything. Um, and what's funny is that the side that uh, deals with like writing, which I think is your left side, um, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, but at, at times it also can be on your right hemisphere. So, you know, um, and again, that that that's just interesting. So yeah, there's no such thing as, uh, and I used to say that, oh, I'm a, what I used to say, I'm a right brainer because I used to be if very artistic. I've, I've always heard if you're left-handed, then you think with the right side of your brain. Right, because it's right-handed. Yeah. It's called, what is it called? Shall I be collateral? It's like collateral or something like that. You you remember the word? But um I I I got that too. It's it's called lateralization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh brain lateralization. Um meaning. The brain lateralization refers to the specialization of functions in the left and right hemisphere of the brain. For example, language processing is typically associated with the left, while spatial awareness tends to be more dominated in the right. This division allows the brain to efficiently handle different cognitive tasks. So with that said, your left brain handles language comprehension and production um, the left hemisphere is dominant for language processing in most individuals, including reading, writing, and speaking. 
Um, we have a um a model for that. I was trying to look up one just now. I don't know if y'all. If you find it, get it. I, I just... got an image for it. When we pull it up, yeah, Next right time, we need visuals. You know, you already yeah. know. You already know. <laughs> Yeah, let people Con- see his brain. Contralateral. Thank you, Logic. That's what it is. Contralateral. Okay. That's, that's definitely the word. Boom. There we go. You get a cookie. That was a point. Um, analytical thinking. This is all left hemisphere. Analytical thinking. It is involved in logical reasoning, mathematical calculations, and problem solving. Three, sequential processing. The left hemisphere tends to process information in a step-by-step linear manner. And see, I can see how people say, oh, well, I'm a left or right brainer because they try to say the left is more logical. You get what I'm saying? Um, making it happen. Did there. Huh? <laughs> I what said, you what you did there? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, go ahead. I'm just messing. You, oh. <laughs> ah, you got Don't throw me <laughs> off. That's so petty. <laughs> Making it act at tasks requiring ordered sequences. Speech and verbal memory. It plays a crucial role in speech production, verbal memory, and understanding syntax and grammar. And then fine motor control. Uh, the left hemisphere is responsible for controlling fine movements on the right side of the brain. So I think that's contralateral. So it's like what? So like movements, it'll... So my right arm, I'm trying to explain it clearly. My right arm movement will be controlled by the left hemisphere of my brain, if that makes sense. That's contralateral um, or whatnot. And I'm trying to give you all these uh, words so you can also like look them up and expound on them if we don't give you enough. <laughs> Juju got cookies, oh boy. Shout out to Zane. <laughs> how funny if y'all only knew the half that's what makes this super funny excuse me oh my god um yeah go ahead oh so here's some more so right brain this is the one i thought i was i used to say i'm a right brain there and thought i was so smart and goofy um intuitive thought holistic perception random sequency your chart breaks it down a little clear um emotional thought nonverbal adventurous, impulse, creative writing, art, imagination, left field vision, left side motor skills. So that's that uh, contralateralization, that left field vision and that left side motor skill thing because that controls the the right eye. And I think the right, um, no, that's the right brain. So that's right. It controls the left eye and then the left side. So Mm. yeah, that's pretty dope. Mm. Yeah, I like that. It is. So I, I got a I got another image that I'm gonna scroll to that'll show you the exact area where they actually did the surgery at Ford. So give me one second. Oh, you talking about you're gonna show us the corpus callosum in the middle of the hemispheres and stuff? Yeah, boy. They just snatch all that right on out. Snatch it up out of there. (laughs) <laughs> there it is right there. There's three actual things done. Um, they can cut it fully. They can cut a, a section out of it. And um, the other one, <laughs> it's hard to explain where they, they do. They do like neither, but they still create, you could say, like a blockage that'll help you uh, do much better uh, with that. Now, now there are other examples um, in which you find similar things happening with lesions and tumors and just brain damage in any other way. But uh, with the experiments, they were much more controlled in that area. So you're able to actually look at it and examine it. But that's actually the place where they do the surgery at right there. That's a good graphic. I like that. The okay. little 3D model coming through for them. Um, what you wanted to say, Kent? No, I said no. I, I was about to say the same. I like that graphic right there. Um, <laughs> that kind of remind me of that app, uh, uh, Marcus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. one that Malcolm gave y'all. Yeah, man. That's... Yeah, we, I got to get that app. We got to use that more. I just wanted to shout out Babylon Dumb for this comment. I <laughs> know brass is gone. <laughs> Cuss me out, but this is hilarious. <laughs> it's like upper Egypt is south now, lower Egypt is north now. Left brain, right brain, counterintuitive and counterfactual, which is, you know, 
you're not too far off, <laughs> actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's kind of right. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> the yeah, the brain show is the same refuge for Egypt. Boy, we try. <laughs> oh, my God, we try. <laughs> but, yeah, so th there you go. That, that part that was read in the image is the corpus callosum, which... Um, so did you want to talk about the corpus callosum chilling boy? Because you're real good on that because that's how both sides communicate with each other. And I think y'all need to know that when we start discussing the experiments and where we start to go into split brain problems as the name of the show, mm -hmm. um, not really a big problem, but it's just, just some challenges for people who went through that. Mm. So as, as a cap counter -la a lateral brain, um, the, the opposite sides control each other. So uh, your left side of the brain controls your right mm -hmm. uh, part of your body, and the right side of your brain controls the left. Um, visual fields work the same way. Fascinating. Yeah, um, buddy. Super fascinating. Your brain, the reason why we, we are commonly known to talk about left and right brain is, is because your brain has specialization. And, and what I mean by that is you may have two um, you may have two uh, specific sections of your brain. Um, like you may say you have like the amygdala, right? You have a left hemisphere, a right hemisphere. Um, one will be specialized in certain um, events over the other side. And so um, writing tends to be on one hemisphere in general. Now, there are people in which it doesn't, it's not that way. This is just in general. Um, and we're able to use that information to help diagnose and see people and some of the human variations. But the reason why that's important is because the fields of vision and hearing are specific to that uh, part of the brain. So if I'm showing something in my right eye, my left brain, the left hemisphere of my brain is, is, is actually computing that information, that stimuli. We're going to use the word stimuli. Right. Um, the reason why the other side of the brain would be able to at least to some degree interpret what the uh, right eye would be seeing is simply because of this um, corpus callosum. Collison. And so when you so that's how these hemispheres tend to communicate. It's, it's a simple way. I will tell you this. This is one of those. Um, variations in which we have known that in evolution there are some positives and negatives that can exist inside the same mechanisms this is one of them um, we have a very large um, uh, corpus and a lot of diseases that we are familiar with are associated with um, damage to this this specific area um, there's some evidence that Alzheimer's is affected by this, um, memory loss, amnesia, um, and some other things that may be associated with this. Um, at least this area gets damaged during these diseases. Sometimes it's hard to say if the diseases is ca causing it or is this itself causing it, you know, it's hard to find out the, the cause and effect of it. In other words, you can have a disease that that um, may cause damage to the corpus or is damage to the corpus causing the disease. And so that's just some of the objectives we want to know. But for all purpose sake, your, the, the hemispheres communicate through the corpus. OK. And if you look at this diagram I got up, you'll see how it works. Um, as you can see, when, when, um, the bilateral network, um, you can see how they cross each other. The information is being able to be shared across each other. But if you look at the normal and the split brain, you, you notice that it's not really passing through to each other. Um, and so that's a good example of what happened. So if you look at the bottom left picture, you'll see these networks right here crossing in between each other. You'll see the little yellow lines. Um, if you look at the split brain, that's what they cut out. 
And because of that, it, it breaks up the normal communication between the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. And then we can get into some fascinating experiments and what they found out about that. Go ahead, get into it. Yeah. Um, that's that Michael guy. <laughs> I have to look at the name every time. It's so counterintuitive, but those experiments were extremely fascinating. Um, and so I'm asking you, is that where confabulation come into play from these experiments or that was from something else? I so, didn't really catch that. Yeah. So what, what happened is, um, during the experiment, I'm going to pull up one in a few seconds, one specific right. that was fascinating. Um, but they did a lot of different ones with shovels, with images and things like that. Y'all can look at the YouTube videos. I guarantee you, you will love them. But the oh, I saw them all. What, yeah, uh, Desana yeah. did with the shovel and the key or whatever. Exactly. And how they were asking, yeah, and they just kind of, like it, oh, no, no, it break, made, break it down. Don't just cold, don't talk with codes. How they, what they, what happened with the shovel experiment? Okay, okay, just go ahead. Just tell them. Just tell them that one. <laughs> I'm pulling up one now so y'all can read what happens with it. Um, <laughs> and so, his yeah. name is, is Michael uh, Gazagniga. That's just. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a hard name. I can't. Gazanaga is Michael Gazanaga, y'all. Okay. It's, it's got to get the syllables together. It's the Gazanaga. I'll just repeat it a hundred times. But go ahead. I'm waiting on you to pull that up. So the, the they would. Um, I'll talk about it while he's pulling up. But you know, they de basically did these tests because they knew about the contralateralization of the brain, right? Right. That's how the, the two hemispheres communicate. But since they don't have that corpus callosum anymore, they mm -hmm. can't communicate. So they wanted to see how that would have an effect on certain things. So they um, basically put a board in front of the participant. Mm -hmm. And that's the best I can remember. It had like key on one part and ring on the other side. That that's all I can tell. What was the other part of it? And it was something like, um, because the the left side deals with language, it couldn't. I might be messing it up. It was something like that before. I think I know what y'all talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, it, it like could not. It 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 could not identify or say key. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because the connection wasn't there anymore. You know, it's like they see the word, but. Because you don't have those process, you, that, process you don't have that. Well, you don't have the two hemispheres communicating anymore. Remember, mm -hmm. it's the cross lateralization of the brain. So, what happens on the left side controls the right side of your body. You get what right. I'm saying, right? And and then the left side controls language and writing and things like that. So, there was mm -hmm. a couple of little uh, implications in the experiment where they couldn't really. They couldn't conceptualize it, so they kind of just, you know, <laughs> made it up. <laughs> <laughs> like they were asking questions, and you know, they were just kind of like, "Well, and I, I," they would just like kind of make it up. It was it was interesting and weird. And they thought it was being completely logical about it, right? I mean, yeah, I think I've seen something like that, right? So. I'm done messing it up, Chilumbe. You can clear it up. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, know you you did excellent. You did excellent. So let me um <laughs> let me um pull up uh this this uh book. Now listen, um I, I've I've talked about this book um before. Um I I, I would hope that someone would take the time now, i'm gonna put it the pdf well the pdf is already in the discord um to read this because this has almost you know it has a lot of information um so here here's here's what the uh thing Sh share my screen right quick juju so this will give you a breakdown then i'm gonna show you an actual image of it i got a, I got it almost ready um, so split brain experiment is a classic type of neuroscience experiment that demonstrates the manner in which different parts of the brain construct or aggravate our consciousness. Such experiments were first done by uh, Roger Sperry and, and Ronald Mayers in the late 1950s and then were produced by many other researchers. 
um, split brain research of our patients who had the right and left hemisphere of their brain separated surgically to prevent seizures from spreading from one part of the brain to another and, and decrease the number of severity of seizures. Um, about 90% of communication between the two halves of our brains is separated. Uh, these patients provide an opportunity to test aggravated consciousness of one hemisphere separate from aggravated consciousness of the other. Right hemisphere, most people, is the non-dominant hemisphere and the one that is not engaged in language. Uh, left hemisphere, speaking and understand language. Um, because the two hemispheres of the brain are separated in epilepsy patients, researchers are able to show only the right hemisphere of the brain an object and then see how individual responds to that information. Classic experiment. The experiment showed the subject right hemisphere a bottle of soda and then immediately showed the subject a series of objects, one of which was a bottle of soda. When asked to choose one of the objects, the subject would pick a bottle of soda, but then wouldn't know why. Um, this is where they draw into. We feel as though we are a self-contained entity that is separate from the rest of the universe. When brain regions that are involved in this feeling are, uh, of separated this are inhibited, that can give an individual a powerful sense of being one with the universe, which often interprets profound uh, spiritual experience. Usually we feel as though we do occupy our bodies, but we exist somewhere beyond the eyes. That is also specifically constructed experience inside the brain. When these parts of the brains are inhibited by TMS, subjects have out-of-body experiments in which experience in which they feel as though they're floating somewhere above their body. So basically what happened was um, they realized that much of our experiments are constructed. That's the bottom line from the split brain, that we do things and then we construct a story on why we do it. Um, for the most part, and that's called confabulation, confabulation. So what they did was they gave a guy an image of, I think it was a chicken in one side of the brain and a shovel in the other, and then asked them a question. They said, hey, man, you know, uh, why did you pick that in this? And so the guy comes out, he comes up with this crazy story. And the story was, well, um, there's some chickens out there. If you got chickens, you need a shovel to clean up the poop. But the problem is, is that they, the experimenters already know that the, re the reason why is because he was primed with a shovel, but he doesn't understand that. And the brain can't communicate with each other like it normally does. And so he creates this story on why. Um, another one is with the bell, right? So um, they show the picture of a bell to a person, right? And when they showed the picture of the brain, uh, the bell, um, they asked him to pick it up. He picked it up a bell, and he asked. Then they asked him, "Why did you pick the? Uh, why did you pick a bell?" And he created a story about on his way into the experiment, he heard bells being played from a tower. Problem is, there was no tower and there were no bells. But he fulfilly, for, to all fullness, believed his story about what was going on and why he made the choice and the decision that he made. So that's two examples of it. Now I'm going to show you a picture of it. So confabulation can only happen in split brain or it can happen to anybody. Ooh, that's what I was just about to add. No, no. So we, we confabulate all the time. Okay. I thought so. Though. I'm just saying. We, we okay, do it all the time. I thought so. I thought so. Cause yeah, we do. Yeah. So like, what they found out was. A lot of stuff. They was confabulating a lot in the discord today. Uh. <laughs> they confabulate all the time. It's a human condition. <laughs> oh man! Go ahead. I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm on the roll. No, we we confabulate all the time. It's it's a it's a human condition. It, it's just you know I, I hate to, to uh well you know it just is what it is. Right. Um. It's a human condition. This is from the Journal of Nature. That's like a false memory, right? If you got a false, if you if you uh think back to something that I might have had, yeah, yeah, you're right about that, Marcus. We do confabulate all the time. <laughs> I'll I be hearing like family members tell stories about something that happened back in the day, and I'm like, nah, that part didn't happen. I remember right. I 
I was there. I know that didn't happen. And you didn't say it like that. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? They really believe, you know, it's like we really believe it, but I guess we have to fill in them gaps some kind of way. So right. So so yeah. what 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 drove me crazy about it is um I like gospel music, right? Love I it. Love gospel music, right? Me too. So there's a there's a video that's that was trending maybe like four or five months ago with uh Karen Clark Shear. She's part of the uh Clark Sisters. Clark Sisters, yep. yeah. Yeah, if you want to know where 80s and 90s R and B Get it from uh, the rhythms it and 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 um, synchronization when they singing and stuff like that. A lot of them contribute to the Clark sisters. They some bad women. Don't get They're me. I'm bad. They and, fierce. So they are. Clark they are. Is, is bad now. Her <laughs> yeah. So she um she had got sick and she was in the hospital for a few days, but as time went on, she keeps adding time to how long she was sick. And the extent to what her sickness was, and people were calling her a liar. And I'm saying, nah, that's not really true. It's confibulation. Um, there's a specific difference between lying and uh, confibulation. Confabulation. Confabulation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Confabulation. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, you see my uh, screen? It's yeah. Sharon. Um, this is this is how the, the the actual experience went. So if you look at the first set of pits, um, the first image, you see how normally you would be able to uh, communicate through this corpus ca colossum, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you see in the red square, you see it crossed over to the right hemisphere, the blue circle to the uh, left hemisphere, right? But when you when you cut that area and you do this. Um, see this right here. That's crazy, right? You see, he's able to. He's actually able to verbalize face, face, right. he's able to say it. Yeah, right. But when you show it to the the right hemisphere, right, he can't say nothing, but he can draw the face. Wow. So he can't communicate it because, uh, again, you need the, the uh, corpus. Colossal, Colossum. yeah, and it's the contralateralization <laughs> issue. And you know what? This brings me to a point of something I was talking to a person with the other day. So, when people when people believe that they talk to spirits, right? <laughs> oh. now, let me go on mute. <laughs> I'm gonna be laughing too loud for this one. Go ahead, go ahead. This is gonna be you, good. You see the 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 uh the difficulty in which we have to even understand brains, how brains work, right? Or the complexity of a brain and where on one side you can see it, but you can't say it. And on the other side, you can say it, but you can't even draw it. However, that, that example went just now. How, how does a spiritual being do any of these, any of these things without a physical brain? That's that's all. That is all. Well, you know, people got their own ideas. You know, we had this long discussion about intelligent design. I think uh, I hold to that people who hold to intelligent design in that way um, believe in human exceptionalism. And if you ask them the questions long enough, Correct. you get to that the, the goal is for us to be here. That we right. as the human beings is the Pinnacle mm. of 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 this intelligent designer's mm. intention, mm -hmm. and when you hear him talk, you will hear e e evidence of that. And so, um, in in that case, this is um, anthropocentralism. Yeah, um, which is, yes, which is this oh. idea that Where? humans are the absolute goal. Of all mm -hmm. evolution and everything in nature, right? Hey, Mark, um, even when you, even when you look at the eyes, you have to have the the light hit the screen and then go back into your retinas in order to even begin to um, receive the image and process correct. the image. And and remember that that your eye doesn't do full full field vision; it's mm. it's actually specialized. So. Um, your peripheral vision is 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 absolutely horrible, 
And then even yeah. that isn't even um your brain's putting the, the rest of the image together. It's filling the rest in, it's filling in yeah. the blanks. Yep. Um, and so there's assumptions made in that. I think Juju brought up a beautiful point about why um um, eyewitness testimony is so terrible. Like to build a, a question on that solely on eyewitness testimony is horrible um, because of that. But I, I don't want to um, make it seem like we can't. There's, there's so. I think this is where science um, does its best because knowing this, they set tools up to try to screen out these biases. Right, right, you know they, and, also, they, and I was gonna say also with victims' testimony, it's not just the testimony, they have to have cooperation and different things. But yes, you have tools to sort out the confabulation and the biasness, so to speak. Right, so, so I don't want, um, I'm gonna show you this, uh screen as well because I don't want people to mistake there's there's a there's a difference between um lying and confabulation right so y'all like we watch a lot of the YouTube shows the live shows and somebody's steady talking and they say something and mm -hmm. then somebody calls them out on it and their immediate response is that ain't what I said but we we, we actually have it on tape no that's exactly what you said <laughs> um and then we start calling him a liar. Well, that's not really right. Right, right. It's it's called confabulation, right? Mm -hmm. Because it may not be intentional. It may not it could remember. be a faulty memory, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? I it mean, could just be a faulty memory. Yeah. Can, I, can I add on that to that real quick? That things that can give people faulty memories, even if they're not an old age... <laughs> Um, I think uh, pregnancy is one of them. Um, mm. call it pregnancy brain. I don't know if that has something to do with the hormones. Maybe that's something we can talk about next week. But chemo is another one. Um, gives you brain fog, uh, makes it hard to remember. Um, and those are two things that I know for sure um that can happen to people and it not be something of old age because when we postpartum. think postpartum, yeah, postpartum. Um, that's a that's a show we need to do for yeah. real, for real. Postpartum right, right. and what it does so, to the brain. Uh, I think, yeah, Mark, Jew, we gonna have to. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that definitely. But you know, I just wanted to spit out some things that could affect people's memory. So you know, just take it easy on your friends that may be any kind of sick because you don't know medications affect you know um people's memory and things of that nature so um mm -hmm. just you don't just you know have grace for people don't always think the worst i think that's the most I, important part i always tell them don't take it personal man like sometimes you got to just know what the other person got going on you know oh ronald birkins low blood sugar very good that's fat mm -hmm. so yeah all these can um play a part in that you know, foggy memory or a uh, confabulation or whatnot. <laughs> Definitely. Sorry. Go ahead, chillin' boy. The the key about it is is that you are unaware of it. That that's the key. You you honestly and wholeheartedly believe in in the story that you created. Like you believe this really happened. They got experiments. I can't even get into all experiments where they got people in the grocery store. They're pushing a cart. Right, they then manipulate an object or something. You don't actually bump into it or nothing, but you may hear the crash. Right? Okay. And then they pull you into the office, and then they tell you you broke it. Right? Now you completely know you didn't break it, but as they continue to talk to you about it, say I got it on video. You would you like to see it? You then begin to confabulate a story on why it happened. And how it's not your fault, though you actually never did it. Right? This has nothing to do with the split brain. The reason why the split brain is important is because they figured out that the left side of your brain creates rational stories, whether they're true or not. Mm. That's the reason why the split brain is so important 
when we're talking about brain function and we're talking about how people behave because the left side of your brain will literally create a narrative that is not based in reality, stuff that never happened. There's no reason to say it did, but Mm -hmm. it wants to convince you as a whole the justifications of your behavior. Some people, depending on what area of science you 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 study, we call it in in other fields. You may call it um, cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Now we've used that term quite a bit in some <laughs> of our studies, but it's actually part of the confabulation. That's actually what's going on. It's trying to find justification for why you behave the way you behave. Mm -hmm. Um, another example, and this is the one that, uh, has to do with, uh, sexual reproduction. Um, men find women more attractive during periods, certain periods of their cycle, but the Mm -hmm. men are unaware of why it is. And then when they studied them, they started, uh, confabulating, uh, why it is. I like her dress. I like the lipstick she's wearing or the the perfume she's wearing or the glasses of hair. And they would come up with these wild outlandish stories, but truly believe this is the reason why when we understand the the, the concepts of it. Mm. And so this confabulation is not just in split brain, but it does split brain gives you a clear understanding. I want to read this so we can understand. Um, is a type of uh, confabulation is a type of memory error and gaps in which in a person's um, memory are unconsciously filled with fabricated, misinterpreted or distorted information. When someone confabulates, they are confusing things they have imagined with real memories. A person who is confabulating is not lying. They are not making a conscious and intentional attempt to deceive. Rather, they are confident in the truth of their memories, even when confronted with contra- uh, contradictory evidence. Confabulated memories can sometimes be confused with intentional lying or mislingering. Uh, mislingering <laughs> involves deceiving others to gain something, while confabulation involves lying. The two are not the same. People who are confabulated are not aware that their memory is wrong, and they are not lying to manipulate or deceive people. And so there's two different types of provoking spontaneous um, confabulations. And so this is uh, this is humans being humans. And so, you know, it's that serious, you know. And because of that, this is one of those experiments that push people's ideas of consciousness, right? Of You heard people like say things like um, your reality is an illusion. These are some of the reasons why scientists say this is because the brain can do some wild things and you are, as they say, a passenger in that. You don't know. There's no way you can tell. You will argue somebody down that this is the reason why uh, you behave the way you behave. Um, I hit him in the throat because he stepped on my shoe, not because I missed breakfast and didn't have any coffee. So these are some of the ways that people um, confabulate their experiences. I mean, hey, you made up. I was going to say, uh, Lisa um, said, what about the brain with mental illness or learning disorders? And I'm thinking she meant in the, the um, part when we're talking about confabulation. That might be a little different. Because when you talk about uh, mental illness, I mean, no, schizophrenics, like wouldn't they be confabulating stuff sometimes, maybe, um, you know, seeing yeah. things and hearing things and really believing that they're there? No. A- no they're, they're, go ahead. There are absolutely um, um, mental health challenges and damages that can be done. If you could share my screen right quick, this is from the book, The Folly of Flu- Fools. Another great book to read. Um, man, this this is Robert Trivers. Um, Dr. Andy had yeah, another great, that, another great read. Yeah, another great read, Dr. 
uh, Andy uh, suggested that we re read this book. Um, definitely, definitely worth worth it. Hey, I wanted to bring up that part you um you said about so a person will be attracted to somebody, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> not even because of how they look. But it could be some kind of it could, it could be something else. They could say, "Yo, she fine as hell," but it, you know what I'm saying. But it might be like the pheromones or something. Yeah, well, not a fe well. There's there's some 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 complications with pheromones in humans, but um, chemical receptors in your nose and on your skin can trigger um, responses in the body. <laughs> um, in which you will confabulate why you feel the way you feel. Mm. And so, yeah, that's true. And, and it's some strange things that go on about that, even with visual, um, and we can't even have visual feels, right? So if a guy sees a woman who's attractive, he squares his soul shoulders. Mm. Um, these things are, uh, there's so much, I'll, I'll say it this way. They know so much about human behavior and not enough about human behavior. Mm -hmm. So as, as a person who is not an expert in the field, the information they have is phenomenal, but it, right? Mm -hmm. But they have more questions that they don't know the answer to. And so when you talk to them, they quickly say, you know, we really don't know enough. Mm -hmm. And it's true, <laughs> but what they do know it's fascinating. Zane says sexy animals. <laughs> yeah. And look, what was crazy is because we Zane always you know this, this kind of goes into the free will uh conversation. The, the you know, when you can't help something, and you could very well your brain is operating without without your awareness of what it's doing. So you could be attracted to somebody, and then I might not even be what you're thinking. You're making up a, a logical reason for, damn, I find her attractive for this. <laughs> it could be this whole other thing that's going on, brain communicating a whole different situation. <laughs> yeah, Robert, Robert, <laughs> that's, that's illusion. illusion. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no confabulation. <laughs> you smelling something? <laughs> hey, yo, that's brain is, you need to get that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, boy. Yeah, but they and then create a story on why you why you feel the way right, you right. feel. Right. <laughs> you know like, it's, it's serious enough. Like you know, borderline delusion. Women ain't gonna buy that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, hey, yo, nah, man. My nostrils was man. I smell something in the air, man. And my, I saw something that you know. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> no, you. you, you, you oh, go ahead. You this you you absolutely right about it. I mean, it, it's really um <laughs> they got they got Sorry. so many. How about this one? This one is really wild. Oh, Robert so Trivers wild. did an experiment in yeah symmetry. I like that, Cujo. Go ahead, uh, Mark. Robert Trivers did an experiment. I think I posted this in, yeah. in after a chat with um men and homosexuality. In, oh yeah, we well, talked about Lakers. this. This is one of those things in which confabulation takes hold heavy, right? Because you have cultural influences that say, you know, this is behavior is inappropriate or this is mm -hmm. not what we do here. And then you have physiological changes in your body that you are not actually aware of. So what he found was those who were most vehemently against homosexuality were also the ones who were most aroused by watching homosexual uh, pornographic material. Mm -hmm. Wild. 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 Um, and he talks about that in The Folly of Fools, this book that I'm showing. And so that's another form of confabulation, one that is culture driven, right? And so mm -hmm. um, our bodies, our brains um, act uh, for majority of your life through yeah. these same mechanisms, right? And right. you are unconsciously aware of them. You don't know that they're doing it. These calculations are done um, and you are lost in translation in that, in a sense. Um, though our language and our culture says that no, 
that is not what's going on. The science says, yes, that's exactly what's going on. And that makes it a complication between cultural influence and objective truths. Right. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you done with the source on the board? Are you? No, I got to read that because that was from a oh. question. Uh, so um, we're, this is Robert Trivers talking about the split brain and, and what's going on with it. Um, this is supported by evidence, the process of denial. He's talking about um, the folly of fools is about how deception is, is a mechanism within evolution mm. to, to thrive survival, right? Right, I get this, that. Yeah. So this is supported by evidence the, that the process of denial and subsequent rationalization appear to reside preferentially in the left brain and are inhibited by the right brain. <laughs> so people with paralysis on the right side of the body due to a stroke in the left brain never or very rarely deny their condition. But a certain small percentage of those with left side paralysis, deny their stroke. And a sausage, I can't pronounce that, anosogenesia. Wait a minute, let me get it for you. Uh-oh. Where you at? Where you at? Where am Hold on. Let me... Anosognosia. Sognosia. Anosognosia. Anosognosia. Yeah. yeah. It's like a type of anesthesia. Party saying, saying it wrong as hell right now. <laughs> Yo, somebody need to put it in Google. Let me say, I'm going to go put it in Google, but go ahead. All right. <laughs> when, when confronted with strong counter evidence, film of their inability to move their left arm, they indulge in remarkable series of rationalizations denying the cause of their paralysis due to arthritis, not feeling very mobile today, over exercise. Uh, this is especially common and strong in individuals with lesions to the right central side of the brain. And it's consistent with other evidence that the right brain is more emotionally honest and the left actively engaged in self-promotion. And so basically, uh, basically in that conceptualization, um, the left brain is always, left hemisphere is always making up stuff. And the right tries to rationalize it or at least uh, minimize it. And so this idea that that there's just a single entity and there's one being is just not true. You actually have different networks and mechanisms that compete with each other. Uh, and in that competition, you get these type of results. The whole time is pre all predicting. <laughs> Anosognosia, that's how you pronounce it. Thank you. I had to say that. Go ahead. Big that's up, that. Virginia. Yeah, big I up, Virginia. Said, I said yeah. It's a English, goddammit. Oh, no, I, I say this yeah. something like that, though. Uh, yeah. I think I, we all were. We was confabulated. I don't, like, don't want to confab. <laughs> <laughs> now I was saying it. So I was like, let me, let me say that. I was saying it. Yeah. I was saying it over here. On this end. Big Google, up, big up, Virginia. Google say it to him. Respect. <laughs> Really? Now I, don't need, I ain't want you to go to Google. I wanted to do it. That's, That's all why good. I heard, I okay. heard you up and did it. And now you can go and check it. I'm pretty. I mean, I heard the word before. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Uh oh, y'all gotta go. We got some. We got some new uh, people joined the panel. About four people joined the panel. Man, we gonna introduce everybody. Start with the God Killer. What's happening, man? What's going on, man? What it do? What it do, brothers? How y'all doing, man? Ain't too much, man. What's going on with you, man? We see you over there, goddamn tan up shop. Yeah, I almost forgot that y'all was going loud. I don't know why I get this mixed up. That, that, that the day I was definitely in a zone. So, y'all, what time y'all went live? Seven or eight? We were live since five o'clock, man. Since five o'clock? <laughs> seven something. Nigga, I ain't get off that show till 8 15. What, and I see you call. What time you call me at eight? About seven. Them. Yeah, I think it's crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy. Anyway, I'm where I'm at. I'm where I'm supposed to be at. All right. We here. Hey, big up too. Um, I enjoyed the show today. Really good. You know what I'm saying? I did. I watched the whole thing. I ain't want to come in, you know. <laughs> a little bit too damn good. <laughs> nah, it was good though, man. Like, 
And for real, man, like, don't get offended by them niggas. And I know, I know what time it is. I know how you feel, man. But don't, man, you can't, not, man. I just want to show everybody what it is. So them niggas know, ain't dumb. They ain't walk with you than walk through. You know what I'm saying? It's just that simple, Shadi. You know that. They ain't seen what you've been saying. They little ass boys in this world, bro. You know what's up. Yeah, well, we over here sophisticated, yo, with the brain. Show yeah. Us, you know? And I think the community need to, you know, tap into this type of conversation, man. Trust me, yo. It's just being able to tap in and have understanding and, and reading comprehension. Yeah, you got to be able to read some material to even understand what they're saying, man. This is a great show right here, yo. We want to make sure that people, you know, understand this diverse content around here, bro. Like, if you don't understand the brain, you'll never understand what's going on with human beings, period, when they're dealing with different subjects and trying to understand things and why we feel the way we feel and why we get offended. All these things stem from the brain and how it works and being human beings and attitudes and behaviors it, it all stems from here yo so this is foundational work just like it was with the evolution throwing down the foundation of evolution right you understand evolution then you understand how the brain work and why it's working it's important you know, all these subjects are important to get it to the point we can be solid and not end up in a damn cult of jabari and all that with the food <laughs> <laughs> you, yo. These ah. crucial, yo. They crucial, yo. Like I realize it now, yo. Oh, they confabulating over there. Yeah. Fabulate. They don't. They don't mean it. They don't mean it, man. <laughs> Funny, yo. yo, we got. We got they don't know that they wrong. I mean, crazy. Like, yeah. We got the we got the superstar space age African in the building, man. What's up, man. With Anthony? Bowman, man. He might be away, man. We gonna move right along. Brass, what's up, boy? Pseudo killer army up in the building. What's going on, bro? Let Anthony go. Oh, my bad. He back. He back. Hold on. We'll get Anthony in there. Oh, can y'all hear me? Yeah. It's Brass in there, too. Brass yeah. in there. Got a whole all star board right now. Is that, is that Brass? Brass, what's up, bro? What's going on, G? COVID is over. <laughs> COVID is a wrap. <laughs> I'm, put, I'm putting that in my That's not past. funny. That's not funny. I'm glad. Whatever, you know. bro. I'm telling you, I'm putting it in my past. I told Damn. everybody, I just That's got a dramatic. train is leaving the station, and uh, I'm on that train, so <laughs> I can't do much, but I can do something. Oh, uh, man. I right, Tell them Babylon. Babylon said we're talking about the brain, not that nonsense. Right, I I let him know. Come through. Okay, let me stop. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> now y'all done damn. Uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Cujo coming back. Uh, say, uh, Cujo, what's up, man? We see you joined the panel, man. Yeah, what's up, man? Peace. Thank you for having me. Shout out to Big Up Virginia. Mm-hmm. Big, you know up Virginia. Big, Big Up Virginia. Big Up Virginia. You know that DMV, DMV is in the building. That's right. Let them know. You know <laughs> Nah, but I'm good on the brain shit. I can talk about this too in, in, in real life. Love what? it. What's up, man? Every week. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's up? Moment, man, you back in there? I right, got people working there. And yeah, you got some connection issues, man. Hey, but I want to talk about that confabulation. Go ahead. So talk this, about it. Go that ahead. That confabulation, right? I was mm -hmm. reading something hard up uh, Marcus I put up before. That confabulation gets crazy though. Cause then like you look at like um you know when people make things up, but like schizophrenics do it too. And then people were bipolar. The first time I ever heard it was I was at an intervention with my friend for um bipolar disorder. And they were saying that he's gonna he actually is gonna he's gonna start saying things or wild things. He was diagnosed, and you start making up these narratives about you know things that he did, and you'll be like, um you play the football game. I played a football game with him, and he'll say, "Yeah, I scored six touchdowns and this, that, and the other." And you'll think that he's lying, because that's how we figured out that he had something was wrong. He started saying things like, "Yeah, I ran. I was in the Olympics, and all of a sudden, the other we thought he was going crazy." Mm. But in the bipolar disorder, they was telling us that's the first time I heard that word. That bipolar people do that too, and they actually exactly. believe it when they have like manic episodes. Mm -hmm. They actually mm -hmm. believe every single thing they were saying. So when I looked it up. It wasn't just them. It was like schizophrenics. Children do it. Mm -hmm. Like they mix fantasy with like actual stories. And you think they lying. But in all actuality, because they're not, you know, they, they're still learning the difference between like imagination and being mature. So they're not always lying. Sometimes they really believe that kind of stuff. And then also 
um, my grandmother when she had dementia. So it's cool how the brain can like, you know, it just shows like that word that uh, Lisa Bear kept saying with the complexity of how <laughs> like the brain will fill in the gaps without you even knowing. And even if it fills it in with, it'll fill in like little gaps or holes you got in your memory or lack thereof with, with fake stuff. The fact that you don't even know that the process is occurring. Sometimes people tell stories they don't know that they lie because they really believe it. I was telling Kent earlier, you got to be easy sometimes. I mean, yeah, you got to go hard on pseudo false, but in the same token, you got to kind of go, you got to have empathy for them too because some people believe it. Yeah. Like they believe it. Like they'll put on, no, I don't want to go there. But they'll, they'll, um, go there, go there. I'm going to just say that. I'm going to just go there. They'll be wearing like mascara and side locks and uh, all kind of you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like I'm not, I'm not. Listen, I'm not trying to send those shots. Uh, I'm being right. no, 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 see, I see, I get in trouble every time, bro. No, like, you're I'm good. We're we in like, trouble they really together. Believe, all right, so let's go there. So I, I think they really believe. I think some people really believe they're like Egyptian. Mm -hmm. So I think something like I was telling Kent earlier, logic was kind of telling me like, I don't know why pseudos get mad. And I was like, bro, you messing with their identity, what they actually believe. Mm -hmm. They believe these arrows. They believe these things. And when you go against it with facts, you're destroying them. Or you're at least destroying the thought that they have of themselves. So the fabulation is real. Mm -hmm. Nah, that ain't even feelings. Imagine telling a That'd be like me telling you, Kent, you're not a man. Yeah, we have problems. See, <laughs> right, right, right. If I go, that's your whole identity. Or, or telling you, you got kids, or telling you, me, Unc, or somebody, yo, you're really not a good father, bro. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that's going remember. against the thing that that's deep seated to them. So when you attack it, exactly. So that's why I say sometimes show empathy rather than uh, anger all the time with them, and kind of have an understanding about what they're going through too but yeah. that was it so you can't that's probably like me calling uh <laughs> when we were talking about delusion the other day people was kind of oh you mean today yeah. no nah, this is the other no this was the other uh, day too uh, it was today but uh, the other day was uh, uh, today okay. yes when you were saying All that right. they were delusional right you're actually telling somebody the thing that they believe in wholeheartedly shape certain right. things in their life you're just saying you, that's like walking up to a Catholic priest. Like you're delusional. Like, he just right. gave his whole oh, life. Look, whole time I didn't think they thought I was putting them on the same uh uh level as a person with uh schizophrenia and shit. Mm -mm. It's just like no. for that moment, for this moment, or for this belief in this section of your life, you're a little out there, but you alright. I don't know why you feel like you got that delusional person y'all and y'all ain't got nothing to combat it then but I, think, but I think we settled on unrealistic and I, I'm down I'm, I'm cool with coming to a uh, compromise with that unrealistic so mm -hmm. yeah I mean they just fill in they just filling in the gap that can in memory yeah right. they filling in they filling in the gaps there's just certain parts of That's the certain parts of the memory have holes and they just filling in the gaps Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to read this definition for Omar. You may have forgotten Omar, but plasticity or neuroplasticity concerning the brain refers to the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neuronal connections throughout life or response to learning, experience, or injury. It allows the brain to adapt and change in both structure and function, enabling individuals to learn new skills, recover from injury, and adapt to changes in their environment. Brain plasticity is essential for cognitive development, recovery from brain injury or damage, and rehabilitation following neurological disorders. That's for you, Omar. So Babylon Dunn says, being dumb or stupid or ignorant are all different from lie or beliefs or believe i don't know I, I, you should join the panel because you've been saying a lot but you should probably come up here and say it because i don't i understand what you're saying but i kind of don't because even even like um when y'all was talking about the homosexuality part there's a lot of confabulation with that too you know <laughs> you make you know you're seriously bro you make you make you'll make assumptions about somebody just based on 
like the stereotype and then even now to go to like misconceptions like you'll believe somebody is homosexual like say if a guy believes he likes flowers you know like weird stuff you know what i mean like the old kind of thing but you're wrong but in your head you believe you just you're the you're the police like you 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 know what it is and what it ain't you know it gets it gets crazy confabulation he's right there are key differences but I think right. in, in what we're and what we're what we're trying to put across or what I'm trying to put across is I know for a fact that people can there is a difference when somebody you can say to somebody you're lying and I know for a fact there are times when that person is talking to you really believes they're telling the truth like their brain hasn't really told them their brain is making up for it and that goes back to lack of free will everybody think they have all this control over their brain and you really don't this stuff is really right. happening without you even knowing it. Man, what do you what do y'all think about that part where uh where Marcus was talking about where you think you like a woman or you know you, you see a particular woman or whatever out in the street and you know you get a low like damn what she she fine as hell you, you kind of come up with these things like she got a little short skirt on but she wearing them jeans or damn well you know she's cute but it really was some some type of uh chemical processing going on like it might have been a smell or something in the air that you know you caught a whiff of her perfume or whatever that or she might be in a certain part of her cycle Isn't that what you said right mark she was in a certain part of her cycle yeah that's what yeah. made you attracted to her and not the way she yeah made. that's why women be wanting to screw when they ovulate it's real you know if you ever had a chick in your life when she go on her oh, yeah the ovulating she going she going she 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 going want to screw but you know, we we tell ourselves copulate over here. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say because somebody okay. calling me down. Copulate, please. All the classy it's words. Wild. <laughs> wild. You good, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, because screw what in the iPods, yeah. No, you good, man. But, but you like, good. Uh, oh, like, God. I mean, that's oh, something God. you feel in real life. And that's something we don't teach our daughters. We don't teach mm. them to recognize when they ovulate. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's the only time you can get pregnant. That's that's it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a possibility that, you know, sperm can lodge in a woman's body and stay mm -hmm. later. But in mm -hmm. most cases, is when she's ovulating. So little little girls should be taught about that cycle. Facts. That's something that we should know. Yep. Right. You know what I'm Understand saying? Like, I'm on it with my daughter. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? I'm on, I'm on it. Yeah, them teenagers, you know them hormones be on fire, and they don't be understanding like what's really going on. Like, I mean, we're animals. You're supposed to make more of yourself. We like to believe in all this universe and all that shit, but in real life, you're supposed to make more of yourself. Yeah, the genes want to make. Yeah, the genes want to make copies of themselves. Like. Yeah, you want to keep and, on living. But guess what? Not just copies. They want to make healthy copies. Yeah, so like, yeah. Even That's in even in like evolutionary, don't be having me read some weird books, but. Uh, in evolutionary psychology, mm -hmm. it says that like humans, and Ronald kind of touched on this too, pause, that the the human beings will subconsciously, they'll actually look at other mates, right, based on their health and the symmetry, yeah. like the symmetry of their face, yeah. the symmetry of their body. Yeah. Uh, you're looking for signs of health and fertility, and that's like bio biologically because you want a healthy, not just an offspring, you want a healthy offspring. Healthy offspring. When you look right. right, so when you look at other people, subconsciously your brain is kind of weeding out the people that you think would make a healthy baby. And that stuff is based on like scent. That stuff is based on like the symmetry of that person's body, even in their face, how they how the, the different spaces between their nose. Yeah, yeah. Um, eyes things like yeah, all of that kind of stuff. So that survive, thrive, and reproduce is real. Yeah, that's, that's how like even the yeah. more attractive when they're younger. Yeah, I saw, yeah, saw you are. I saw That's something about like that. Um, how they how they view about. view people with symmet uh, symmet yeah, symmet 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 symmetrical faces. Exactly. Yeah, symmetrical faces. Yeah, they say that there is actually you see they say that there's actually a um like there's actually a science to um I don't know the exact <laughs> word, Mark. You could probably help me, but there's a science to beauty. Yeah. Like yes, how no, however no, no, many no, no. eyes, it, it how far your eyes are apart, how far your mouth I is, from your nose, stuff like that. I, I think all the complexion shit is learned. It's I cultural. think it's a little more yeah. complex though because 
I mean, you know, yeah, you could say, you know, men want women with a certain body type and symmetrical and all of that. But I know some men that want them totally opposite. Yeah, because we're not we're not we're not just fixed on the natural. We're also influenced by societal norms. You know, yeah. like it's nothing natural that's gonna make you yeah, like perfect. a woman that's yeah. light skin. It's nothing natural that's gonna make you like blonde hair and blue eyes. That's the influence like, that you have. We're also like I mean, uncle? we also are creatures of the land in which we live. Right. Know, but look, just that real. look, you know the cultural norms of America, right? But my uncles, all they like is big women. That's all they like. That's <laughs> right. Not, no, that's not that. that. No, I ain't saying like what? What'd you say? I'm saying the cult from the cultural norm. You know the cultural norm yeah. in America. No, no, no. You think. cut out when you said your uncles like one thing. What was the thing? Cultural norm is big, a big women. Vulnerable. Big women. Oh, big women. Okay. Yeah. There was a time I, in Western Europe where big women were a whole thing. Like they, yeah, they were really in the big women. You know, this shit it, it's faddish, so it changes. Yeah. But in, yeah. in 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 actuality, us being animals, symmetry is what matters mm. in real life. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what we see health. Because you see it all over the animal kingdom. Like, I got a garden. Like, my plants are pretty much symmetrical. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be symmetrical. The healthier plants are going to be more symmetrical. It is what it is. So so what do you say to the ones that um that, that get, that, that aren't symmetrical, that still... I mean, we all know. have relative sy- symmetry, to be honest. I mean, you have some people that's a little off, more off than others. But it is what it is. They're alive for a reason. So obviously that shit survived. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, well, so I'm just the, like the different type of symmetry. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I mean uh, symmetry, I mean, but it's it's cultural. You know, like it, like in, in our community, we like, you know, the bigger butts or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's cultural. But at the same time, like in, in our within our culture, that's something that was looked at at one point it had to be as something that was Made made it look like that woman would produce viable offspring. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying subconsciously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're, we're still influenced by the <laughs> yeah. world. I believe. So oh, what yeah, do you know, agree? So Can what I say something mean? without us getting cut up? You ever yeah, heard the term bad, baby um, making? You ever heard the uh, no, not cut off. I mean like the channel struck. I mean, like, you ever heard the statement? Um, baby making hits. Yeah, baby making hits. Like you see stuff like that. It's a she has hits like stuff like that. You know, you see things like that. It's and a too, exactly. Exactly. Like, what did the flat butt start getting attention, man? Like, I mean, depending on the population, you know what I'm saying? That's the thing. You have isolated populations of human beings, and you have certain things that w- would be more highlighted than others. That's all it is. Yeah, okay. I think you know it's so. I think it's socio cultural too. It's like psychological. Exactly. I think it's, it's biological, it's but then I think it's it. socio cultural too. And then yeah, evolution it's is a lot of nuance. Because there was nuance. a time, there was a time I know, like in Africa, um, there was always not Africa per se. I hate when I say that, but they were saying like b- bigger guys. It wasn't a. T- there was a time yeah, when that was like a sign deal. of wealth. That yeah. was a sign of wealth and health and kings being a king mm-hmm. and reproductive success. Now it's like getting the gym. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it, 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 it's uh, over time. It just it just changes, but I think too, I think, um, and this goes back to the kids. I think it also depends on your experiences, like like you said, like um, your uncles like bigger women. I think it also um, depends on the associations they had when they were younger, like 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 mm-hmm. or, or or like the the during the formative years mm-hmm. would lead to a preference of during that time when they were forming their sexuality. Or form in their um, like what they liked or, or stuff like that. And then the sad thing too, I know this is crazy, but a lot of people, you know, your first what they say, uh, uh, your 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 first love is like that's kind of like what you base all the rest of it off of. So like whatever you love, that's first thing. Unless it went bad, but if it went good, you kind of base the rest of your things off of that. So if it was a per se a bigger woman, whatever that means, um, you would have more of a preference. You know, yeah, I, I know. I noticed like cats who who oh. actually grew up around bigger women, <laughs> like women. My fault, big. Marcus. I know you're trying to get in. Nah, yeah. Let me um, let me uh put some caveats to it. So, in general, men tend to and females tend to like certain uh, body types. It's, that's that's sexual selection. Um, sexual selection is very fascinating. 
Um, mm. It's why male peacocks have bright colored flowers. Certain birds have different types of beaks. Um, and it is expressed <laughs> mainly through the idea that you are healthy enough to reproduce healthy offspring. So that's um, part part of the part of the thing. And then you yeah. have, um, but then you have something called the error management system, and that is where men tend to overemphasize sexual intentions in females because it's better to hit the clock one out of four times than zero out of four times. That's the best <laughs> way for me to put it. And so the error management is fascinating. We're going to, have to do a show on that. That's going to be a wild one. It's implicated in all types of production that we do in manufacturing, such as um, you could make a car alarm um, extremely sensitive right? Or you can make it extremely hard to fire, to go off. Um, they find a middle ground, air management. So they make it more sensitive. That's why sometimes if a big truck comes by a car, shakes it too much, the alarm will go off or a heavy wind. Um, they make them overly sensitive because it's better to be safe than sorry. In other words, it's better for it to go off when it, on a false alarm than to never go off or it's so hard to go off that your car actually gets stolen. If men in a bar, woman looks at them too much, they are more likely to assume they have sexual interest in them, even though they just may be just friendly type people. Um, so that in and of itself is part of the error management. And that is also attributed to sexual selection. And then you have cultural deviations right? That is, you tend to like women who are close to looking like the women you grow up with, but slightly different. That is, they believe, part of sexual selection, but that has to do with what we consider to be gene transfer. In other words, you don't want someone in your family, but you want someone who carries on similarities to your family. And so all these things play a role when it comes to this and most of it is subconscious. And so uh, that's how the sexual selection works. Error management, symmetry, they all blend in together to make people have certain types of behaviors in general. Can I say something about Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're basically saying don't start off ugly, you're going to end ugly. Hey man, Yo. listen, man. <laughs> listen, let me tell you something, man. Grandmother and them ladies look, boy, don't bring no ugly women around here. <laughs> they hit you with that. Yeah, they be like, nah, I'm telling you, they hit you with the don't bring no white women around. Mm -hmm. Grandmother tell you that. You be like, damn. Your mother and them say, boy, you get threatened. It's the craziest thing ever. That, and then your father say, don't bring no ugly women around here, yo. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it, yo. They say, when they say beauty, they say beauty is skin deep, but ugly <laughs> go right down to the bone. <laughs> <laughs> so you're mm. like, damn. And you know, is that, that, that got something to do with sexual selection too, yo. Right, the better you look, the more you know, the yep. more mates yeah, you're gonna be to get. Yo, a, a lot of times, like offspring, that's important, yo. So, it's, you know, I just was like, you just say, I don't have no ugly kids because I follow I the rules and regulations. You know what I'm saying, baby mother end up, you get an ugly baby mother, and have ugly baby kids. <laughs> now, yeah. well, the well, great well, thing we, about uh, that is, uh, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, though. See, yeah. so y'all think I'm saying something. But it's the beauty is actually based off of it's in the eyes, right? Of the beholder. You know what I mean? You you like what you like, yo. Well, you know, right, y'all. So if she got a lazy eye, then uh, you yeah, you're gonna have a lazy yeah. eye kid. Right, you don't want that. Now like I mean, to put, but not, to put real, a little bit know, of brakes on this conversation. Hold on. Let me just say this. Hold on, hold on. Let me do the disclaimer. <laughs> I wanna be clear though. Because <laughs> I wanna paddle, I don't want no 
smoke, not extra. Listen, <laughs> some people find beauty in conversation. Some people find beauty uh, in listen. Oh, oh, oh. This is facts. Listen to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Some people find beauty in education. Some people find beauty in a person how they carry themselves, no matter how they society tells them how they look. <laughs> and this is yeah. Brad saying this. So no, nah, it's called a sapiosexual. That's a real thing. Now, in, in real life, though, no, all that shit is somebody, something that somebody made up. I didn't even know you was here. No, oh, what's up, y'all? I, I do. I got a bad hand of that. Hey, what's bro, up, y'all? Real, the beauty is not in the eye of the beholder because the beholder doesn't make up his own mind. We like to think that all of us make up our own minds. Here we but go. You're influenced by the society. Okay? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. There's no way you can tell me that a population of black, of very dark skinned people will find light skinned people attractive. What? That doesn't make sense at all. What? I'm talking about a yeah, that don't sound right. Right. That's what, you, that's right. you was close. You was close when you first started, and then you got off the rails a little bit. No, no, I, I, I hear what he's saying. I no, hear what he's saying. Beauty is in is not in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is Jeez. in the eye of the society that defines what beauty is. Huh. Somebody told you that red bones was pretty. Talk Somebody to told him. you that shit. Oh, Somebody told you that. Oh, Somebody no. told yeah, you that. Shit. Now that ain't that ain't true, yo. I had I had the opposite experience, yo. You did not. You don't. It's not about you. You you're not you're uh, not independent of this okay. world we live in. You uh, didn't make it up yourself. You, you're nobody, going hard now. Yeah. Nobody, going period, hard. nobody, period, nobody, <laughs> period, made up in their own mind what okay. pretty eyes were. Nobody did that. None of us did that. We've all been influenced by the society in which we live. It's no way in the uh, hell you can tell me a population of people who have their own beauty uh, aesthetic. I want to look at another people's beauty aesthetic and think that it's better than theirs unless they're influenced to do so. Uh, That's bullshit. Okay. There's no, oh, there's you no such thing okay. as pretty hair. You there's mean that techno babble? Techno babble. Are you, I had the whole. I, hold up. Are you, are you done? Yeah, yeah. yeah let him finish. Let him finish. You're making a good point. I'm, 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 I'm kind of. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think he's I, saying I, what y'all I, saying, you though. I, I hate it. That's interesting, though. Hold on. That's. I mean, I, I thought about it before I said no. it. I ain't just running my mouth. Now, y'all got to go ahead with the with the signs and see if he's saying it's great. But he, he's on y'all determinism thing. Or the no, he's not. Hell. No, he's not. Yeah. He, he was close. He was close. No, and then he no, went off no the rails. Way. No, it, there's no way in hell a population. Who are around themselves, like you look at women in the in the um in the um the court sign people, like we can look at them and think they look however, but their men look at them like they're the ultimate women. They're not gonna look at another woman from somewhere else and think that she's better than their women because they have their own beauty aesthetic. We yeah, don't that have don't, see that don't make sense, yo. Okay. How does that not make sense? That's how I mean, be, be, because as as men, we use the term exotic all the time. I mean, that's there are a lot of men who are attracted to now. Now, the exotic thing might be subjective of what's exotic to us. Like the playing a mic down. Yeah, playing a mic down. Just a little bit like that. Hey, I'm in the bathroom. Exotic thing is not real. Shit, wow, wow, what's that? Right, I'll leave and come back. You don't gotta now, leave. Just turn your thing around. Real. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> sound like he was at the concert, yo. <laughs> yeah, it sound like it sound like we in the crowd and you on stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't get my mic that loud, yo. How you yeah, that mic is mic too. Yo, yo, stupid. Yo, nah. I, 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 just, I, I, I respectfully I disagree man, with you, uh, cool joke, because I, I mean. I, I mean, he's talking about the koi song. I only like the koi song. I, I can't speak for yeah, the koi That's how come they look like they look. What? I mean, they look like they look. They they are perhaps the oldest people on the planet, and they Might maintain a certain phenotype. They maintain that phenotype because yeah, they obviously mate with each other. No, they don't. Uh, they each other that's why they I That's why a lot of black women have fat the asses because we made it with black women with fat asses. This I, shit I, I don't know about that. That's an extra one. You do an extra nah, check. That's the truth. That. That'll probably cool, be. I want to get a little pushback. Hold on. I want to get a little bit of pushback. Right, so listen, listen. I'm with yeah. you with society, right? But I'm saying that that's just a piece of the conversation. So scientifically, there's inherent taste too, right? There's certain things that are innate. There are certain things that are innate, so it's not just so when you say because there's no absolute name one thing that's innate. Listen, listen, listen. No, no, listen to what I'm saying, bro. 
Give me half a second. If I know Virginia, big ups Virginia, just give me half a second. Give me half a second. So what I'm saying is, no, you're not. You don't have no harm, bro. First off, I want to say beauty in the eye of the beholder is a proverb, so you might want to be careful believing too much into that. Secondly, the um the uh inherent taste. Sometimes you have like ev- like evolutionary evolution plays a part. So like the preferences for like symmetry, like we was talking about, or specific traits with health and fertility, that's like evolutionary too. So it's not just societal. I, I agree with you on the societal piece. I just don't agree when you say it's only that because there are some. Psycho- hold on, hold on, hold on. Skin There's color, some psychological. Skin color doesn't. Skin color doesn't, doesn't, doesn't mean, hold on, light skin doesn't mean. Like a a cut off gene tonight, said, don't you? If somebody <laughs> dark skin with a dark skin, light skin doesn't mean you're unhealthy. No, you, no, no. But to a dark skin person who's around dark skin people their whole life, why would that be attractive? No, but why listen, would, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. That's what I mean Seriously, by if, you can, if you celebrate your own cultural aesthetic. I give up. If, bro, if you we celebrate on, you, our own yeah. cultural aesthetic, why oh, would a blind head, man. Why finish woman, though? Little why would a blind if, if we celebrate our own cultural? No, aesthetic, why would he listen to you after you cut him off though? That's what we really I cut somebody mean. off. You yeah, hey, in the middle of talking. All right, I'm fine. My bad, Shadi. Yeah, so you got what I was saying. Is, society is part of it right but inherent there are like certain you have inclinations and the influence right or what you find attractive so what you're doing is you're just saying it's society society what i think you're doing is society 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 but there's personal experiences you you know you can make an emotional connection or something like that like if you say if you're young during your formative years of, of learning about attracting to the opposite sex say yo say yo best um Experiences or connections with, with a blind person, right? So you and like see, that was what you go ahead. Bro. That's what that, that that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying. Is, I give I'm up. Saying, <laughs> now I'm saying, yeah. saying we don't know what you're saying because you didn't cut that <laughs> man off. Let him flow. Let him flow. Wait. So like that stuff, like your individual. I know you with society and groups, but sometimes with attraction, that's an individual thing. Like what you find attractive or desirable so like what you're talking about is like cultural conditioning and stuff like that but even societal standards aren't static so they even that evolves over time so i think you're taking kind of taking away the individual uh inherent taste that they may have or not because then sometimes too there's certain how can i say there's certain negotiation and resistance some people are attracted to people that they know they can get some people are attracted to challenges you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of times you'll be talking to a lady or or whatever, um, where you'll say like, you know, the easy, the easy. Oh man, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. Y'all know what I mean, or take it and run with it. You you might you might have uh, <laughs> fun. Less right? effort. That's what you're trying to say. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, right. You might you might just you might just spend a little bit of time with somebody that's not very resistant. But then you may marry the person that's very resistant. So I, I'm just saying yeah. it's not all society. Yeah, no, that's no, all I'm no. saying. I, I, I disagree too. totally, and that's and that's, okay. that's that's like the I disagree totally with everything you said because <laughs> okay. I, I, I didn't hear everything, but I disagree with. Yeah, you didn't I hear half of it. I, I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> what he I mean, say? What he say? What he, he said? He said What'd that say? people can make up their own minds. Like somebody. No, like, that's not what see I said. Something that they like. That is not. That's I mean, not what I, I said. mean, in a nutshell, bro. Come on. No, come not on, in a bro. nutshell. Not in I mean, a nutshell. Okay, well, I, I'm All right, not, let me let me let me put let me tell you what I'm saying in the fact is no 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 I want I don't want you to acquiesce to a faulty premise like brother arm says I want you to understand what I exactly said what I'm saying is societal standards definitely influence individual tastes but you can have certain connections where the society won't matter like for example for a long time it really wasn't cool society wise for black people and white people to be together per se but it still happened right. it still happened it, it's not yeah. like that's what, I, what okay. i'm trying to say is okay. society okay. is just not a hundred percent okay can i respond by all means what i'm saying is what i'm saying is like society let me go out there white woman all right, go ahead. that white that society made that white woman attractive you society made that white y'all don't flip over you can go off I'm of course, you, uh, uh, of course you can see symmetry. come on man you can see symmetry in anything yeah, you, like, go hard, you, didn't yo. make up, 
You did not make up your go, own bro. mind. Let I, I, I Let did not go. make Keep up going, my Kujo. own mind. I didn't make up my own mind either. I, it's not, you know, it's something like when I when I do what I do, I do it purposely and I mean it. Because I can't pretend that Ice Spice ain't sexy. She's sexy as shit to me. You know what I'm saying? She's sexy as shit to me. Know, she too goddamn you yellow. can't be laughing, yo. You're going to make no, me laugh, no, man. She, she, I don't like it. I don't like it. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you, in real life, she's too yellow for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, straight wow. up, nigga. I ain't bringing no yellow ass girl to my house. Can I ask you a question, Cujo? Cool yeah, no, 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 yeah. We learn these things. These hey, things but, hey, but Kujo, let me ask you a question. We just make up our own minds. Kujo, let me ask you a question. A person, man. You literally just said that it's not up to you. You can't make up your own mind. And right. then the very next sentence said, I'm very, I, I do exactly what I choose. I know exactly what I want. And I choose I that. No yeah, way. because I, I'm doing it conscientiously. I'm not doing it. What? I'm not doing it thinking crazy. that I understand everything. I no. do it realizing what is that I'm weakened by this. Because I'm I, I'm influenced by the society in which I live as well. I'm influenced by it as well. I remember when I wouldn't even say white girls look good. I wouldn't even say it. Well, what about that? Do they look good? Do they look good? Well, That's what you want to know right now. Yeah, some of them do. Yeah, I think you got a color issue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with myself, bro. No, hey. I'm with myself. I'm hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to help you out. Hold on for a minute. Everybody freeze. This man just said that he ain't bringing no brown, no light brown skinned woman in the house, but yeah, he like white me. women. I didn't say I like white women. Yeah, you don't do. Yeah, you just said hey, it. Don't say that. No, I what said ain't, ain't nothing wrong with white, liking them white girls. Hold on, man. hold on, hold on. I want to hear this. Nah, don't, I want to freeze it up. I, I would I never mess with a white chick, dog. Don't curve me like that, dog. Like I, said, I, didn't that. <laughs> I didn't say that, nigga. I ain't <laughs> <laughs> we heard you say it, Joe. I ain't mad at you. Yo, yo we heard. Don't make us be mine. I can find a white woman nah. attractive. Yes, that's what I he said. He seen them attractive. He didn't say he was going to do anything with them. He just said there are some attractive. Yeah, I, I, I personally never dated a white hold on, hold on, a white woman. Hold on, hold on. I never said Joe. I wouldn't say that because I didn't say it because I don't mean that. I what did know you what say? I say? What did you say, Cool Joe? Like about the tan women that you met. I remember when I used to wouldn't. Recognize that a white woman was attractive. So now what you saying? So pro black. So what you saying now? Not a cute. To the point where I can recognize what they're attractive. <laughs> okay, now freeze. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Because you pro black, on. not because. No, hold on for no, a minute. You said, hold on, cool Joe, cool Joe, cool Joe. Prior to that statement, you was like, I ain't bringing no light tan woman in the house. Did you not say that? I wouldn't do that. Okay, so 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 the point I'm saying is, you wouldn't bring a light. Hold on, you wouldn't bring a light tan woman. Hold on. You wouldn't bring, bring a light tan either. woman in the house, but yet nope. we heard that next statement with a few sentences later that mm, hey, I said I, I recognize you didn't like women 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 women. Hold on, I'm just trying to let you know. You think uh, you white woman is attractive? Hold on, they cute. I just didn't say you would bring them in the house. You think white women are attractive, <laughs> but like ten women, I've never bring them in the house. I'm just trying to. And I said I thought Ice Spice was attractive I, 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 at first. That's what I said. I said I think Ice Spice, but I wouldn't what? bring her into my house. Who? She's I want to give out. Can I give hey, a fact? Let you get in there, but like you really got to turn your microphone down, bro. Because when you laugh, it just. It's, yeah, it's just like, it's got, he, got, he got the COVID cough, yo. When yeah, he talked to yeah. this dog about the COVID, yo, did you get tested for COVID? <laughs> yeah, bro, you got to tell the thing to convince a person that they didn't make a damn man. man. The echo, like, <laughs> That's the saddest thing. So, ever. on the part that we were talking about, you know, liking who, black or white, light or dark, this and that. What's funny is that um, this is like maybe not related to topic, but it's a fact. And I learned it last night. And I don't realize it. But, um, you know, interracial marriages just became legal in Alabama in 2000. Yeah, so we still got right. for it a little bit. Yeah, they were doing that a lot. Hold on. Hold on. We're talking about, when we're talking about skin color, that doesn't have anything to do with whether a person's healthy or not. See, when no, we, I mean, we but come you know, it does. I get what you're saying. You want your symmetry. We don't live in it. We don't live like that anymore. Um, no, we're a common place. There live was a time. like what? Hey, Juju, I'm gonna need you to moderate. But <laughs> live like what? Like, how, how are we supposed to? You can moderate. How are we supposed to be living, though? 
No, I mean, black, I'm saying black, like we're black. living how we're supposed to be living because that's how we're living. It is what it is. I ain't saying how we're supposed to be living. I'm saying that in most populations, women are typically lighter than men. In the homogenous population, mm -hmm. the women are typically lighter than the men. That's an absolute fact. You can look at it in Europeans. You can see it in Africans. You can see it in Asians. The women are typically lighter than so men. You, so you're that's saying that colorism that, and... So you're saying that colorism is a human thing? No, no like I'm not no saying that. I'm saying that? that our colorism is racism and blackface. Our colorism is hating black people. That's what color, ain't no such thing as colorism. It's racism. It's just racism that black people inflict upon themselves. It's no, there's mm. no fucking colorism. That's bullshit. That's another fucking word for us to get more confused with. It's racism. We look at the world like white people. When you look at white, when you look at light skinned people and think that they are more attractive because they're light skinned, you might not even think it. You don't have to think it. Society tells you already. Yeah. Ain't nobody, and you never made up in your mind, in your own mind, what pretty eyes were. You never made it up in your own mind. But we all yeah. say you yeah. never yeah. made it up what pretty yeah. eyes were. You, you, you never did. Yeah. Nobody did. Let, let me say yeah. this. First of all, Cujo, my mom's um high yellow. Really light. My mom is too. I, 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 so what? She's I, dead. Uh, my but I prefer, okay, that's TMI. Wow. My that's mom's real. dead too, but we're not going there. But um, I, I typically prefer darker toned black people. You feel me? me? And I also have. Let me finish. And I want to get back on the brain show. I think we went by some say after I talk. Chalimbo is gonna go next if he has anything else he wanted to add in for the conversation of split brain problems. That's what this was conversation about. But I think we can get more on this in another conversation and add some more nuances to it so we can get a clear understanding. But what I'm saying is that how beauty was defined to me had nothing to do with what society taught me was what was in my home. And most of the women that I looked up to were very dark. With beautiful so you think eyes. your home <laughs> let me finish. But very dark. Him? You're going to let me finish because I can't mute you. And I'm not going to do that because big up Virginia, but damn. Um, but what I'm saying is that that didn't really have much with society having an effect on me as I had positive black women figures in my family, in my home with easily accessible. So I didn't have that, that problem with having an, I never had an issue with me being dark skinned or me having short kinky hair. Do you understand That's what I'm saying? That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so what I'm, but what I'm saying that, but, you, but you don't know is, what pretty hair is. But but there's no such thing as pretty hair. But you know what I'm saying when I say it. So, so, but, but listen, you know exactly so I, I, mean I usually, I... so I usually advocate that one, people who have children or around children don't use that terminology of good hair, bad hair. Um, and that we don't demonize certain features. You get what I'm saying? Because of Black African people descendant, we come in all shades. We, we come in such vast categories of shades and, and hair textures that some of us can be passing. And that doesn't mean you have a lot of admixture to do it, because a lot of people thought my mother's father was an Italian man. And it wasn't. He was a dark-skinned Black man. But I'm just showing you how people can think certain things that aren't necessarily true. Both her parents are dark-skinned. So, I mean, you have to have those examples in the household. But I'm going to move on to Chilembe to get it back on track as far as split brain. Are there any other uh, facts that you want to talk about add to the conversation please yeah let me uh, i got some sources so we can clarify some things just try to keep it on what the science says if you would share from i'll uh, share my screen seven and a half lessons about the brain is this that you already have it up is that it yep that's it right oh, okay. there this is a section we did a whole show on it um so i'll just read the section the process works similarly for seeing faces. When you're a baby, you've learned to recognize the people around you. You're an infant brain was tuned and pruned to detect fine differences in their faces so you could tell them apart. But there's a catch. People tend to live around others of the same ethnicity. So babies are often not exposed to a wide array of facial features. That means the baby's brains do not tune itself to detect those different features. Scientists think this is one of the reasons why it can be harder for you to remember the faces of people of other ethnicity right. from your own or to tell one face from another. Fortunately, you can quickly retune your brain and restore this ability by looking at lots of diverse faces. It's much easier 
than returning to the sounds of foreign languages. So culture, structurally, your brain, all that plays a part in yeah. how you view other people. It's hard to say people are yeah, but can we? Can we? Uh, admit? It's hard. I'm hold on, hold on, sir. It's hard for us to um, see other ethnic groups if we're not uh, at least as a child or at least um, aware of it. And so you would naturally build uh, attraction for those that you see around you more so than others that are not. It's just the way your brain are wired. But it, there's caveats to it um, in which you can then. Uh, Work on now. Here's another one right here. <laughs> I Can I say something real quick? Yeah, hold real on, quick. sir. Let me let me talk about this. We talk about blackness in science, so let's talk about one of them who developed one of the tests that we hear quite frequently used. This is Kenneth and Mammy Clark, a husband and wife team of psycho uh, psychology researchers, use the dolls to investigate how young black children view their racial identities. I don't know how many people knew that there were black psychologists who actually did the first test for this, but nevertheless, here they are. Uh, they found that given a choice between black dolls and white dolls. I didn't dolls, know about this. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was in most, the temple. In the this temple. is powerful. Yeah, most black children prefer to play with white dolls. They ascribe positive characteristics to white dolls, but negative characteristics to black ones. Then upon being asked to describe the doll that looked most like them, some of the children became emotionally upset at having to identify with the doll they rejected. The courts concluded that black children as a role of living in a racial society had come to see themselves in a negative light. Um, then they tell you about here. Here's a picture of them right here, the, the two people who did it. Brilliant right. test. Um, this all yeah, but that's exactly what I'm saying. Wait, wait, wait. That's exactly what I'm saying. No, no, no. no. Say don't, something? don't come, come flip, don't, don't, don't come. No, that's exactly what I'm saying. No, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. What I'm saying is those, those mm. children who saw those white dolls, like you say, you grow up in, a, in your own culture, you see the people, but we're inundated with, with images of white folks on TV. We're inundated with this shit. We're so, inundated with it. So our opinion is skewed toward the mainstream. So I don't see why we can't. I mean, that's 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 patently obvious in, in the shit the study you just showed. They did two of those um those studies with the dolls. You know what I'm saying? That was the first one. They did another one in the 80s. I remember when they did the one in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? And it was the same results because we tended to look at the light skin as if it was better. And why do we do that? Because we're inundated with these images on television. We so, grew up with it. That's so, normal. We're black. So, as we were saying, um, and I want to add something after you, Chilling yeah, I want to say something after you, Juju. So, there's, there's a lot of caveats to this discussion, and we can speak in generalizations, but it's very hard to follow these influences through relationships. Um, the bottom line is, is that most people will be most attracted to those in their own ethnic group. That's just the way the us. That's versus not them. true. That's just the way the us versus them works. Right. But, but who us is the versus, us? Hold on, Kujo. Hold on, bro. But us versus them is, is plasticic. It can change. So while us versus them may be based in somewhat an ethnic group now, it could be based on a sports Scientific team. Scientific literacy. Right. Religion. And Thank so you. as as we begin to delve into Thank developing you. different <laughs> modes within our brains, we are able to make more effective decisions. And so the first doctor you don't make was done in the nineteen forty bullshit. The you first don't make decisions. Hold on. The first that's that's not true. Um the first the first um dial test was done in the forties, the second one was done in the seventies. They see no change in there. I'm hoping that they do another one now with the progress that we've made and see if there's a difference. There's no modern Why would you test. think would, there's nothing that will make it be a difference, dude? Got to wait till he's finished. There, there's plenty, hostile. There's, right. There's plenty of things that make a difference. You got social media that allows you to see black people in a lot of different light. You have President Obama. When he became elected, we've seen an immediate increase in college graduations, college admissions, as well as high school admissions. So listen, there is some evidence behind that. So yes, there is a difference. You can't say it's not. 
um, we have more black faces in science, more black right. faces on TV, more black faces involved in politics. And so this becomes a multiplicity uh, thing. We can't make assumptions based on things in the 70s and the 40s and assume that they're the same today. We have the advent of the Internet now. We see black royalty now. So we can't just make those type of assumptions. But nevertheless, what we do see is, I'm bringing it back to configuration, people can be attracted to many people for different reasons, and they will create a story on why that's done. You were, you oh, were, Mac Rob said they did one on CNN with Anderson Cooper. That's yeah, they did one with Anderson Cooper, too. But go ahead, Drew. Uh, so will you finish? Shalom? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look that up that Mac Rob just told me about. Um, yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. Um, put that article about the, the two uh, black psychologists, too, for the doll test. Um, I remember that. But see, this these are the reasons. That's one particular reason why representation is important. So, you know, people saying that it's not, mm -mm, it, it definitely is. And uh, that was one of the cases why. Um, I learned that about, about that a long time ago. And it always stuck with me. Um, yeah, that's all I want to say. Representation is important. Go ahead, Brass. In our in our poli sci class, we learned about the Clark the Clark Doll test because um, it actually played a that that test was a big deal. Was it actually played a big role in the civil rights movement mm -hmm. um, because of the Brown versus Board of Education? They actually used those findings as evidence of the psychological effects of racism. Of racial segregation on children in that like so they basically used that test and uh, the what they got from it because i don't think people at the time whether they didn't want to realize it or they didn't realize it of uh, the effects of segregating african-american children mm -hmm. so one of the reasons why they established you know the decision to dis declare state laws establishing separate public schools for black and white students was unconstitutional it was influenced because they realized, you know, not just that it was wrong, but in essence, it was just, it was destroying, it was making children internalize racism and it was making them, it was going to destroy them, you know, going forward in their lives. And that was actually one of the biggest um, reasons with Brown versus the Board of Education, why they overturned it. That's Excellent all I wanted to say. That's, I try to always put the political science stuff in there every chance I get. Yeah, but that's an excellent point right there. Yeah, boy. You get a cookie. You and these dirty yeah. cookies. <laughs> I, I, I think that that dog test was extremely indicative on how much we're influenced by outside society. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the things I read in Mongo Slade's book. Yeah, uh, not Mongo Slade. I'm sorry. Mongo, Mongo Slade wrote a book? What's the name of that book? Nah, I'm saying, Mongo right? Pop. I was about nah, to say I, the I Slade like Mongo Slade. Slade. I like that nigga name, yo. Oh, Slade. Slade. Nah, Mongo Slade was the dude in, um, I think, Let's Do It Again with Bill Cosby and Cindy Poitier. That's one of my favorite movies. I love that name. But I met Mongo Pop. You know, he was saying how, how like, um, the African thought European women were ugly. You know what I'm saying? They just didn't find them attractive because they had their own way of looking at beauty. Beauty is something that a society defines. Beauty is not something that just happens to be. You know, and we've been and we've been indoctrinated to believe it. That's the case. Like if you even think about the King Kong movie, King Kong liked the white girl. You know what I'm saying? And then they 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 put that trope over and over in our head with the black man liking the white woman as if that's something to be attained. That's something that we learn to think. That's not something that's natural. You, you, there's nothing you could say. You couldn't read anything that could tell me that that's natural. That's not natural for us to fucking want them. It's not natural. And we do. We do. I'm not saying you do. I'm not saying that I do. I'm saying that we have that amongst our own. You know, we look at that as, as if it's something to attain. And that's something that's that's been, we've been influenced to think like that. That's not something that's natural. It's not natural. It's not natural to think that blonde hair and blue eyes is pretty. For real, in Rome, for instance, in Rome, because I'm big on the history, in Rome, people dyed their hair blonde so they could get money as prostitutes because that's what prostitutes look like. Because there were so few women. That's how come the blonde hair was a big deal in the Mediterranean, not because they were so pretty, but because there were so few of them. But now we yeah, have to believe that this shit was just... But that's the proximity, it, though. 
I mean, exactly, but it's pro proximity. So within your own population, within the population of people right. that look like so you, you're not going to like, look at that woman and think a she's A great special. number is going to be more valued, though. But that's... No, it, it's, it's valued because it, it's valued now because that's what we're indoctrinated to think. But it was valued at that time simply because it was something that was exotic. It was exotic. Like those humans like people shiny at that time. things. No, it was just different. You know that. And it's just not a big deal. The same, like and, in the same way, a woman, a woman of like the 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 Dinka woman, they don't talk about that a lot. But the Dinka women were prized because they were tall and black. You know what I'm saying? So they were prized as well. They were sold out the Mediterranean as well because it was an exotic thing to the people in the Mediterranean Understood. during the time of the Turkish expansion. I'm saying, but this shit is something that we learn. I mean, symmetry is real. Like, I can look at somebody and see symmetry. I mean, when regardless of color, in there, but in human beings, human go beings, in any time you want. We, you we, we, I don't want to. I don't want to cut them nah, off. Bro. Yeah, I mean, but I'm getting cut the fuck off now by both y'all. Yeah, but you made me. your point. And no, um, but you're right on the low though. I don't shut the fuck up. Conversation, and not only that, it's getting extremely hostile. And this is not that type of show for it. Your language is wild, but I think I think like. This yeah, show is I, for I, families. Like we want yeah. children or young adults to be able to sit with their family. And I've already tried to tell you in the nicest way, but you can't get it together and control. So I got to put you in the back. Plus we're off subject, like overdue. And that's crazy right now. You made your point very clear. So next time I'll say, when we have this conversation, bring some sources to validate your point. Cause that's what we do. Home of the source of shut up. Go ahead, brass. Yeah, I think I think sometimes I think one of one of the things I learned since being in the Discord is I, we just don't talk in absolutes. So when you say something, one thing happens because of just this one thing. I, I, you know, we are we agree necessarily with what you're saying. We just don't agree that that's the only thing. So just to give you some clarity, it's not that we're disagreeing with you. We just don't. There's it's not just society. You know, blunt in blonde hair and blue eyes. Even blonde hair and blue eyes sometimes is seen as a rarity. So that that can be that can cause some attraction. So that's genetics, evolution. You know, it's a it's a lot of things, including culture, including media. But it's just a lot of things. But back to the split brain, even with the Clark dog test, I don't want to leave that. I think it's important that these kinds of things um, happen because they do. Remember the test that um, Marcus or Shango was talking about in regards to. I think we were having this conversation a couple months ago about uh, when the police do why they don't want the police to do target practice with black, um, what's the word, Juju? The black um, targets. Uh, yeah, with the black targets. It, it makes right. them like, yeah. Right, it builds that it makes, bias. It, it, exactly, it gives that bias or, you know, mm -hmm. black, you know, it's just, you Listen, know, the brain, the brain is a beautiful, the brain is a beautiful thing, but I think it's, it's complexity is one of the things that makes it so beautiful. So the split brain, it's, it's definitely a good conversation. Uh, I think all that other stuff we could do on a different conversation, different show. Yeah, this is not the cigar and drink show. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta come in here keeping it classy, using a certain type of verbiage, and right. you know, not that we're perfect, but yeah, we we just we're not doing that. Um, yeah, we're not yeah. doing that. So. I feel like it's what nine thirty. We've been going for two uh, hours. Um, is there anything you want to say? I don't like to stretch it out two hours, and I'm ready to go. I ain't going from live for like, you know, I'm a little ADD. So for me, I ain't finna observe, you know, absorb anything else. And again, we don't want to overwhelm people with the information. Right. Um. But if there's anything else that needs to be said, Chilimbwe. Um, brass. I'm here. I'm not gonna rush, but you know. no, no. The last thing, the last thing I want to say too, especially with confabulation, and I think Babylon Dunn is actually doing a good job in the chat he, of kind of stating was. the differences. Yeah, doing of stating think, the difference. He was yeah. though. He yeah. was killing it. It's crucial. It. It's crucial to differentiate between genuine confabulation related to memory gaps and um and the broader issues where you got misconceptions, stereotypes, and misinformation. So there is a big difference if you study the subject or you really do some research on the subject or even just some reading on the subject, you'll begin to tell the difference and, and whatever. But I like what Babylon Dunn was doing because when you, you are 
our position is always to increase awareness, education, right? And understanding that things are diverse. So when we have these dialogues, I think it's good to also have somebody like Babylon done where they're saying, listen, just don't don't mix up lies and actual belief with confabulation because they're two different things. So I just want to say the Babylon done. I appreciate that. That's actually that's what actually made me hit the panel on top of you um, 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 dropping the link because confabulation and belief, when you mix those two, mm -hmm. you think you're kind of saying the right thing, but you're you're dead wrong. So I appreciate that. I <laughs> just want to say that. Roger that. Shalom way. Yeah, so um, I want to Claire, um, actually read the studies. Um, this is in a book by Michael, I can never pronounce his last name, um, in his book, Who's in Charge? Is that, does that uh, enough? Um, yes, I can't pronounce it. I can't. I just got to look at it every time, but, but go ahead. I'm going to interrupt you with the name, but go ahead when I get it so people can look him out because he's one of the Foremost leading expert experts on split brain, isn't that correct? Though, true. Uh, share your screen. I got it up. Okay, that's that's you. Yep. Um, let me see. Let me make sure it's highlighted right. Oh, yep, that's it. Gazaniga, Michael Gazaniga. So this is from his book, Who's in Charge? And like I said, he he actually performed the surgeries, and uh, Joseph Ledux was his. Uh, I guess uh, he was his teacher for his PhD candidacy. Um, I forget the terms they actually use for it, but I want to give you some examples on how it functions and the stories they came up with. Uh, we showed a split plane patient, two pictures, a chicken claw was shown to the right visual field. Uh, so the left hemisphere only saw the claw picture and the snow scene was shown to the left visual field. So the right hemisphere only saw that. He was then asked to choose a picture from a rare pictures, placed in full view in front of him, with both hemispheres could see. The left hand, hand pointed to a shovel, which was the most appropriate answer for the snow scene. The right hand pointed to a chicken, the most um, appropriate answer for the chicken claw. Then we asked why he chose those items. His left hemisphere speech center said, oh, that's simple. The chicken claw goes with the chicken. Uh easily explaining what it knew. It had seen the chicken claw, then looking down at his left hand, pointing at the shovel without missing a beat. He said, and you need a shovel to clean out the chicken shed. Immediately the left brain observing the left hand response without knowledge of why it picked an item, put into put it into context that would be explained. It interpreted the response of the context consistent with what it knew. Uh, another example, we have numerous examples of the process working the split brain. For instance, we flashed the words bell to the right brain, music to the left brain. Patient reported that he had seen the word music when asked to point to a picture of what he just saw. Our patient chose the bell, even though there were other pictures that depicted music. Then we asked him, why? Why did you pick a bell? Uh, he replied, well, music, the last time I heard it was uh, music from the bells banging outside. Uh, he left the, his left brain concocted the story to explain why he pointed to the bell. Another example: uh, flash of words red to the left hand, to banana to the right. Then we placed the assortment of different color pins on the table and asked him to draw a picture with his left hand. He picked up a red pin, which was left hemisphere, making the easy decision. He drew a banana with the left hand, which was the right hemisphere. When I asked uh, why he drew the banana, his left hemisphere which had no clue why his left hand had drew, drew the banana, replied, it's easier to draw this with this hand because this hand can pull down easier. Once again, he did not say, I don't know, which would be the accurate answer. So basically, that's three of the exact um, experiments that he personally had done and drew this conclusion. And as you can see, when we behave in manners that are based upon stimuli that is unknown to our conscious interactions, we are more likely to confabulate a story on why we did the things that we did versus saying, I don't know. And we're going to do a book tomorrow, The Death of Expertise, and he's going to cover some of these exact same points. Again, looking at it from a different area of science. And this is where 
um, science gets into the muck and mire. And that is, they could be speaking about the same process, but call it completely different things based on the area of study that you're learning. So the left brain interpreter is also associated with cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when you have two points that are in conflict, you tend to generate an idea or story to rectify the two points that are in conflict. Left brain interpreter. Um, confabulation is in psychology referred to as a loss of memory, memory short term when you fill in a gap. It's not intentional and you fully believe the story. These things are complex. There are caveats to everything. But the overall idea is, is that a part of your left brain will create a story that is believable and reasonable to you, but is not based in reality at all. And seen. <laughs> I'm thinking the same two words. So and seen. Uh, yeah, Dark boy. Killer, you know? God killer napping. He been he been on he been at work Bro, for uh, about ten hours a day. On he has YouTube. twenty hours in the past forty eight hours. Right. Dedication. Yo. He in that chair, look, you know that chair he'd be sitting in? I bet he leaned back, mouth oh, all open. <laughs> 20 just hours. I went back and looked today. I went back and looked. I said, he's still like, Unk ended the show today five times. And then I looked and he just finished at eight o'clock. He ended funny. the show at least five times and kept going. Dedication. Man. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, hey, uh, nice, not good show, man. Good show. This, show. this was so. this was these kinds of even with the um split brain that's a topic that's that's, that's that definitely definitely is something that should be talked about definitely. yeah but i appreciate y'all thank you very much yeah i think that's about all y'all you know <laughs> <laughs> gonna do this little outro music on y'all real quick like um yeah. and you already know what it is let me um close out with this saying uh the truth has no defense against a fool determined to believe a lie that is uh common amongst people that we can we continually have conversations with um hopefully one day they will stop believing the lies and accept um what it is yeah, you need to go ahead and put that on a banner so we can just run yeah, you're that. Pay, you're not the trademark that right there. Yeah, just it. just a little bit. But um um yeah, brass, you got any final words? Um don't waste time trying to get people that are getting paid to misunderstand you to get them to try to understand <laughs> okay. you. It's a waste of time. <laughs> don't ever try to don't ever oh, try to God. get somebody to understand whose sole job is to misunderstand. Yeah, boy. Well, remember, we're pseudo killers advocating for scientific literacy in our community. Yep. Join us back here on Thursday for our Galaxy and Beyond for another exciting show. Um, we're probably still dealing with uh, a stellar um, subject. I don't know yet, but it'll have something to do with the stars. And yeah, that's what we're doing. And then we'll be back here. Sunday night for another episode of the Interactive Brain Show. Oh, Monday. I believe this Monday, if you all will join us, we tomorrow, that's tomorrow. Today's Sunday. Oh, Lord. Um, we're going to be starting um, Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols. Uh, Bobby Banger is going to be leading that. I don't know if he's going to be doing a community of skeptics or pseudo killers. But just check that out. Uh, if you don't have the book, I know that Audible has it, Kindle. Um, get that book, Tom Nichols' Death of Expertise. Absolutely fascinating, by the way. And you can also Google him on YouTube and find some of his lectures if you like to do it that way. I'm one, I'm one of those people. I like to look at a lecture uh, first and then, you know, I'll dabble with the book. But, you know, but that that's it. And, and that's pretty much our schedule for the next week. So enjoy the rest of your evening. And with that, we out. Bye. <laughs>